What's up guys? It's yo boy on the sensei. Welcome to a new series, Reborn as a Prodigy Hayuga during Minato's era. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Consider joining my Patreon to support the channel. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. I like most humans didn't think about how I would die. I knew I would die someday. But I certainly didn't think it'd be Truck Kun cutting my life short at the age of 20. Before Truck Kun had struck me down, I had just finished my stint in college, studying to be an electrical engineer. My life was going well. I was on my way to getting a job, making some cash, maybe finding that special someone and settling down. But before my life even started it ended. It was tragic or at least I'd like to think so. As I was laying on the street conscious fading, I looked around and saw no help in sight, truck come slowly, mockingly, driving away, my world starting to get dark. I was upset but accepted that there would be no tomorrow for me. I wouldn't see my brothers, my dog, my mother, all the things I loved gone out of my reach. I haven't seen my father in like a month I wish I had spent more time with him was my last thought as my world faded to black. But then I was reborn. My world didn't end as I expected it to. One moment I took my last breath and the next I took my first. Everything blurred and with a cold intake of air and blurry vision. I could hear what sounded like footsteps and the chatter of a crowd. I spent time fading in and out of conscious trying and failing to discover where I had been reborn. I was an above average student, nothing of note there's plenty of those. I lived in the city so I took the bus to and from college. I had three brothers parents that separated. Nothing special in 2020. So why was I reincarnated? It wasn't something I wished for or deserved. But it seems that was how it was going to be. Time passed and my vision improved and sounds became more audible. And with my improved senses, I discovered where I'd been reborn, looking at my mother's blank white eyes, the constant mumbled Hayuga-sama from what must have been branch members as my mother passed them. I'm most likely a Hayuga. Hopefully, not a branch member were my last thoughts as I drifted off to sleep. My first birthday came with lots of revelations. First, I wasn't a branch member. I'm the grandson of a recently deceased elder. My mother being his only daughter, kept her from being sealed, and will hopefully keep me from being sealed as well. Second, I likely wasn't a full Hayuga. I was half Kagaya. From what I could hear from the gossiping branch members, my mother was captured by some hidden mist ninja. When she was on a mission with her Genin team, she returned wounded as the only survivor after two weeks of torture and integration. From what I could hear, my white hair was quite the hot topic among the Hayuga, many speculating that more than interrogation happened when she was captured. But from what I can tell, Mon has kept quiet so far, and claimed that my father was a Kanoha Nin, so it remains speculation so far. 3. I found out my name Shiro Hayuga. As sad as that sounds, my interaction with my mother was minimal. She rarely came to see me, and when she did she just stared at me, neither picking me up, nor changing me. When my diapers were soiled, leavening that job to the branch members who also didn't talk around me, leavening me starved for attention, and lacking in vocabulary. My birthday was a quiet affair as most Hayuga birthdays are, my mother holding me for the first time in months, and carrying me around showing me to the elders and the clan head, none of who I recognized as Hayuga members from Naruto's time, likely putting me somewhere between the first and third shinobi war. While being carried around my thoughts wandered, I thought about the future, what I could achieve, what I could and what I should do. Time passed as time does. I turned to, I started blabbering as much as possible to every available source, probably annoying the branch members taking care of me. I developed motor skills and started to run around. I also started playing with my chakra and trying to unlock either of my bloodlines, hoping to get an advantage early on. I experimented with pushing chakra to my eyes, bones, and generally just circulating it around my body, trying to train my control with very little success. Time passed and I became three, and I was almost certain I didn't have the Shikotsu Myaku I spent a considerable amount of time sending chakra to my bones, and was met with no success. But I did have a healing factor. I fell and broke my arm while wall climbing in my room, and within minutes, my arm was fully healed. When the branch members came and examined my arm, they didn't find a problem even though I heard a snap. I was dismissed as a child overreacting, and the incident was over with. I'd had minor success with the Byakugan I was able to activate it, but was unable to see more than one meter around myself. As it was, it limited my vision more than it helped, but it did allow me to see my chakra network from the neck down and had been a great help in making me conscious of my chakra and subsequently controlling it. 
Yet more time passed I became four and started officially training, doing light exercise, katas, and chakra control with the other Hayuga children. I stood out like a sore thumb, a mop of straight white hair among a crowd of black, most of the children avoided talking to me, which was fine but disheartening nonetheless. This might be a prelude to my future in the Hayuga clan. So far nothing has endeared me to them, and I don't think anything will. I spent about three weeks training, and I was soon called a prodigy. My tajutsu was nothing special yet, but my physical strength, stamina, and ability to control my chakra was noticed very quickly, and put me well above the other Hayiga kids training with me. I outclassed them all in all areas during the lesson, so it was decided I was to be separated from the rest of the children, and given a personal instructor from the branch family, to take over my training from then on. Nothing much seemed to change in my life after that. I got faint praise from my mother, a good work you're doing the clan proud, and a pat on my head, after she watched my training, and that was it, she remained distant and uninterested in my life. But that was fine. I already had a mother, and I didn't blame her for disliking her rape baby. Yet more time passed. I trained all day until with my new teacher Takuma, until I was unable to move. I was then was promptly patched up by my healing factor during a break, in which Takuma would go over Tenketsu positions, organ placement, and where to strike to inflict the most damage with our Tajutsu. Afterward I was told to train more. So, I did exactly that not wasting any time. I repeatedly asked to be taught medical Jutsu and was shot down, again and again, finally. I was told I needed better control. But when I proved myself by passing Takuma's control test, water walking, I was told up front that it was unbecoming for main branch members to learn useless skills like medical ninjutsu ug. I continued my pursuit of medical ninjutsu. I constantly badgered my teacher about how I wanted to use medical ninjutsu to heal myself and train more, and the Hayuga clan proud, but was met with zero success. So, I gave up for the time being promising to come back to medical jutsu, trusting my healing factor to get me through until I start the academy. Days passed I continued my training using the evening to experiment on my own, with my Byakugan, following the path my chakra took through my brain, and through my eyes, increasing the flow in tiny increments in different parts of my brain, and eyes being extremely careful, and desperately praying to any deities above, hoping to avoid injury. I was met with success when I realized I could change the scope of my vision, changing the almost 360 degree vision to the normal 170 degrees. Using the narrow field of vision I could see much farther and could still see chakra and through walls. Overjoyed with my success I continued to experiment with my Byakugan and brain, and soon discovered that I could slow my perception, which was a huge win in my books. It's almost like I got a discount Sharingan. I couldn't stop smiling for days afterward. I continued experimenting, hoping to find some way to improve my memory by further my brain enhancements with chakra, but my luck had run out. I got cocky and tried going off the already automatic chakra pass that the Byakugan used, and started to try enhancing different areas of my brain. That stunt landed me a week in the hospital and a stroke as a result. I had to weave a story about trying and succeeding in awakening my Byakugan, but getting distracted and pushing too much chakra into my eyes, the story was tentatively bought by the doctors, not earning much more than a hum from my mother. Sadly, or perhaps not sadly my healing factor was noted during my stay. My release from the hospital was uneventful, strict orders not to train without supervision, and I was on my way only taking a second to note the number of faces on the Hokage Monument. My training resumed this time with much stricter with more physical workouts, spas, and with medical ninjutsu and Byakugan lessons in between. Sadly, this was cutting into my free time, but it was welcome as I had no one to spend time with and decided that I probably should stop messing with my brain for the time being, or at least until I was sure my healing factor or medical ninjutsu could reverse any damage I'd done to myself self, which would likely be far into the future. Thus, I continued my harsh New Delhi training. I was experimenting with my perception and Byakgen when I had free time, but not daring to venture into the unknown in my brain. The training wasn't fun, but it put me ahead of the rest of my age mates, and further cemented my prodigy status which I needed as I had plans and aspirations. For those to come to fruition I needed strength. I was practically given the best possible start for a second life. With both the Hayuga and Kagaya blood, I had a chance of awakening the Tensigen and the Shikotsu Myaku in the future. There was no need for body snatching, no Hashirama cells. I had a lot of potential at my fingertips, and I intended to use every second I had, and every resource provided to climb my way to the top, and possibly to eternal life. I had plenty of ambition and plenty of potential. I hoped to use it to make the most of my new life in the Naruto-verse. 
I recently turned 5. I spent most of the year having the gentle fist burnt into my body and mind, muscles torn, then healed and refined by my healing factor. This gave me extremely good strength and stamina for my age. Just recently Takuma moved on to the 8 trigrams, declaring my gentle fist passable. After months and months of work, the 8 trigrams are not just one technique there are more than 10 8 trigram moves. 8 trigrams palms revolving heaven, 8 trigrams 16 palms, 8 trigrams 32 palms, and so on so forth. The 8 trigrams palms revolving heaven being the one Niji was called a genius for using, was sadly not available to me. Takuma explained that it was only for the clan head and heir to learn, and not taught every main clan member. I decided that as cool as creating a giant dome of chakra was it was probity draining and better in the first place to not be hit. So I decided to put it out of my mind and focus on the rest of the 8 trigrams and come back to it later. The 8 trigrams use the Hayaga's innate ability to expel chakra from every tenketsu in their body. Blah blah blah, Takuma never seemed to tire of his voice. Sometimes explaining things like I was retarded or something, seriously Takuma could blabber on all day. I sometimes thought about asking for a new teacher, but Tokuma was the best Tejutsu expert the Hayuga had not counting the clan head, so I put it out of my mind and mentally prepared myself for years of mind-numbing teaching done by the stoic yet talkative Takuma. My time spent being taught by Takuma was cut short and replaced with standard math, reading, and calligraphy, a royal pain, but nowhere near as bad as the clan's propaganda-filled history lessons. Thankfully I'm not being tested on history, so I've managed to make up for some lost time by practicing with my chakra as well as trying to find other ways to make up for lost time. What I came up with was asking for weights or weighted seals if they existed. My idea of weighted seals was approved, then immediately vetoed by my mother of all people who unbeknownst to us was quietly watching my training that day. She said a soft but firm no. You'll stunt his growth and then left walking off slowly, a visibly nervous Takuma let out a sigh of relief and I blew an annoyed breath out of my nose, wondering what her deal was. Did she care question mark comma I decided that it was not worth the thought and dropped it. Days passed and I continued to study and train, making great progress in my tajutsu, but mediocre progress in my reading, writing, and calligraphy. It was slow going, but I trudged forward and slowly made progress, and soon it was decided that I could go to the academy and not embarrass the Hayuga clan as my mother had put it, and so off I went to the academy. The academy is quite large, and is comprised of several buildings. The building had that iconic tree in front of it with a swing on it, and a giant sign with the kanji for fire, K, on the top center tower of the building. I left my mother with a quiet goodbye and left towards the interior of the school. Something I didn't know myself was that the academy and the Hokage's office were in the same building perhaps to protect future generations. The classrooms in the academy are unnecessarily large and have high ceilings, perhaps, so the Chunin don't feel trapped and have a good old PTSD episode and murder rape. A group of children I choked back a chuckle at the thought as I meandered my way to the far corner of the room, happy that I could claim the protagonist's seat by the window. I had hoped for a grand entrance ceremony with the Hokage, giving his fabled speech about the will of fire. But my hopes were unmet. There was only a grumpy looking Jenin taking your name and telling you what classroom you were in. I took my seat ignoring the room of squealing five year olds. And looked out the window and drifted into idle thought. Recently my mother handed me a book and told me to read it. Being the good son I am. I started reading the book that night. The book was about a nin that was protecting a rich merchant family. Anyway. The nin and the family were hiding in a hidden room in their manor trying to stay undiscovered. But the family had a baby, and the baby was crying and making noise, doing what babies do. And so the story goes. The nin made a hard decision and snapped the baby's neck. Sadly that's not the worst part. The worst part is that they were still found regardless. The book was a bummer. But I get the idea. Sometimes you have to make a decision that will break you. And even then it will perhaps be meaningless in the end. Not a lesson a five year old should get. But I appreciate it nonetheless. In front of the blackboard is a podium, situated far from the student's desks, and put in a position where the teacher can view everyone. Standing at the podium is one average and forgettable ninja staring quietly and waiting for the class to notice him. I meanwhile took my time to look at my classmates. There were quite a few familiar faces. Kakashi, Asuma, and a very ugly young Mike guy, who was quite loudly shouting about youth. I figured Kakashi was way younger than Abito and Rin, maybe they meet when he gets moved up a grade. Okay brats quiet down for that matter why am I the same age as Kakashi? That's suspiciously well timed, no doubt the work of whatever reincarnated me here. Other than that nothing of note has happened. The days trickled on by, my training continued as did the academy classes so far I've got the gentle fist and some variations of the 8 trigrams under my belt. I've also learned the mystical palm technique and the diagnostic technique. 
but other than that the jutsu I can call on during a battle is limited as I focus mainly on tojutsu. I decided that I should spend some time learning ranged attacks. I felt unsure about how useful kunai and shuriken would be for anyone other than Jenin, so I put them off leaving it to the academy to teach me. I instead decided to focus on the vacuum palm. It didn't seem to do any real damage. It just sort of pushed enemies over from what I could tell. It wasn't much, but it was heavily connected to the 8 trigrams being called 8 trigrams. Vacuum palm so I figured it would give it a go and see what comes of it. I had a vague idea of using the shadow clone jutsu as well. But until recently I didn't have a reason to know it. Weirdly it seems that just about everyone knows it. If my teacher can use a shadow clone to watch the class while he takes a dump. Perhaps it's not so hush hush after all. So reason secured I proceeded to ask the closest adult about it. When I got home which happened to be my mother. The shadow clone jutsu allows the user to create one or more copies of themselves. The user's chakra is evenly divided between themselves and their clones. Depending on how much chakra the user has and how many clones they make. Because of this, usually only those of at least Jonin level can safely use the standard shadow clone technique wow. That's probably the most she said to me at one time. Can you teach me it or have Takuma teach me it? She shifted forward a bit and narrowed her eyes at me. Hum. You have enough chakra I'll show you. Watch closely, tiger. Serpent. Ram. In a poof of smoke, a shadow clone appeared behind mom. Okay thanks, Okasama. I spun on my heel and left trying to escape as fast as possible. I sat on my bed feeling weird about that whole conversation. She's never said more than a couple of words a month to me. That threw me off Sai. I'll think about it later. With that out of the way I proceed to write down the hand signs and ponder my next steps. And how I would find time to practice the shadow clone jutsu in my already packed schedule. Learning the shadow clone jutsu wasn't hard as I soon found out. I figured it'd take me two plus months to learn. But that wasn't the case, it only took me a week. It would have been shorter. But I had exhausted my chakra for the first time, and ended up laying in bed for three days. Though I had quickly learned the jutsu it wasn't quite what I hoped it would be, my clones couldn't slow their perception. And when I and or a clone are performing tasks that require concentration, I'm unable to have more than a few shadow clones active at a time. Although I had enough chakra to have five or so active it felt like my brain power was being split five or so ways, and so two clones seemed to be my limit. Still, I'd take what I could get, I had hoped to swarm any future battlefields, with hundreds of fast ass kicking white haired Hyugas, but it was not to be. Although I could only use two clones that still left two bodies to pursue other stuff while I trained my physical body. I figured it to get started right away, and sent one of the clones to Harris Takuma into teaching me the vacuum palm, and another to go get scrolls for the Academy 3, and learn them. I spent some time trying to get along with my classmates with little success. Kakashi took my attempt on a friendly spa too seriously, and throat punched me. And I in a moment of vengeful wrath threw him into the air and kicked him into the ground. Safe to say he'd given up on young Kakashi. I and Guy, on the other hand, became fast friends. We spent a lot of time talking about Tajutsu, training and sparing. My new favorite pastime was joining Guy and DUI Guy's father for some after-school training. Well the training was always silly and ridiculous, though it was working and somewhat fun, so I had no complaints. More time passed it was about the first quarter of the year, and we just started sparing. Most of the year so far was spent on ordinary school subjects, such as history and mathematics. We were taught the basics of NINJUTSU the Academy 3, Tajutsu, and a little bit Jinjutsu. We also spent a good amount of time learning survival outside. Survival was probably the most interesting for me. It was pretty much basic bushcraft. Fire starting and covering your tracks. All the stuff I had no clue about, and probably wouldn't have learned, had it not been mandatory. Sparing was fun for the first few days. I fought. Well, I poked my way through the other students using the gentle fist. Then the instructor started pairing me with Kakashi. And Kakashi was a little shit. He throat punched me again. Kakashi being an ass aside, he was a challenging opponent, forcing me to constantly use my bullet time and slow my perception because of how fast he could change his tactics. I had to fight in constant slow motion and constantly watch and make sure he wasn't setting some kind of trap. He got me quite a few times, forcing me out of the arena when I was too focused on fighting him, kicking dirt into my eyes and taking my feet from out under me, thus ending the fight. Overall my academy life was going great I made good improvements, made a friend and rival, learned the shadow clone jutsu things were shaping up. Sadly it wouldn't last. I knew the third shinobi war was most likely going to happen within the next year. And I didn't feel ready. I could probably beat a standard genin or run from a chunin. But I don't think it'd last against a jonin. And that worried me I had hoped to make more progress than this. But it was unrealistic to have expected so. I was doing fine. At 5 years old I was about low genin level. 
I took a deep breath trying to stop myself from spiraling into a panic. Worrying wouldn't help I should try to awaken my Kagaya bloodline again, this time using Yang Heavy Chakra. It was the middle of the school year, tensions were rising throughout the elemental nations, and there were whispers of war on the horizon. I sat in my room cold up in blankets and stewing in a particularly nasty fart. I was getting increasingly nervous and was making no substantial progress in medical ninjutsu, nor the Kagaya bloodline, and was hesitant to dedicate more time to it. As it was I spent very little time learning medical jutsu, most of my time. Learning medical ninjutsu was just memorizing bone, arteries, vein, and tendon placement. I only had three actual medical jutsu to my name, any more than that was beyond Topma, and thus I'd have to intern or apprentice at the hospital, and that was a no-go. I didn't want to get shafted and permanently stuck in the hospital. I was also worried about what the clan elders could do, when I no longer impressed them, and furthered the Hyuga name. I decided to go back to brain enhancements, although incredibly risky, and without a doubt dangerous they were something I needed. I didn't want to waste time learning time consuming things that I could later take a glance at, and remember forever with my, as of yet theoretical memory enhancements. Course of action decided I left my room in search of books on the brain or more specifically memory. I'd had little to no luck finding books, so I sent my favorite teacher on a mission to find them. With that done I bumbled about trying to find something to do with my time. I was sitting cross-legged in front of a mirror I recently had the branch members put my room, and winking at myself and admiring my good looks, I was originally sending chakra to my eyes in small bursts, varying in both size and density, and among different paths. Trying to discover new things about the Byakugan and maybe luckily awaken the tense again, but alas, I had no luck and got distracted and started admiring my exotic looks. My mother, of course, walked in while I was doing so. Shiro, Takuma brought the books you asked for. Well this is embarrassing we stared at each other silently for a moment. Thanks, I was just admiring my good looks, more silent eye contact ensued. The books are on the table would it have been less awkward if I made an excuse? Maybe honesty isn't always the answer. I was sitting on my bed, a stack of brain related books next to me. I was currently trying to summon up the mental strength to do a possible 8 plus hour study session. Sadly it was not working, and I was once again staring at myself in the mirror. I took the mirror off the wall and turned it around, so I could no longer see my reflection. That done I proceeded back to my bed, and cracked open the first book on the pile. Jinjutsu, and the brain made easy probably not what I need. But I'll take a look are memories stored in just one part of the brain? Or are they stored in many different parts of the brain? Inijin Yamanaka began exploring this problem about 160 years ago by making lesions in the brains of animals. Finally getting somewhere after going through half of the books I was overjoyed. I continued reading blah 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 short term memory occurs in the prefrontal cortex. It stores information for about one minute, and its capacity is limited to about seven items now. We're cooking long-term memory is processed in the hippocampus of the temporal lobe, and is activated when you want to memorize something for a longer time. This memory has unlimited content and duration capacity. Skill memory is processed in the cerebellum, which relays information to the basal ganglia. It stores motor skills, like using hand signs, throwing a kunai, and disemboweling your enemies. On the next page was a diagram detailing different parts of the brain jackpot. I couldn't keep the grin off my face. This is what I needed. I spent the rest of the day flipping through the rest of the books, in case I missed something. That done I spent the next week with my hand on my head constantly using the diagnostic jutsu, parsing out the different parts of my brain according to the book. I also enrolled Guy to help in my brain enhancements. Not that he was much help, or that he knew he was helping. What do you need my help for my most youthful friend? I just need you to sit still so I can stare at your head with my Bayakigan Yosh. What are you trying to do my friend? I'm finding ways to send more chakra to my eyes. Since I can't see the Tenketsu in my head I'm using yours. Now stay still and quiet well. I draw your Tenketsu half-truth Yosh. Shiro, let your power of youth explode. Guy ended that sentence with a thumbs up and a sparkle in the corner of his eye. He was indeed as youthful as one might imagine. Short-term memory, prefrontal cortex long-term memory, hippocampus skill memory, cerebellum I'd identified all the parts of my brain with the diagnostic jutsu, and was ready to experiment. Late at night, I sat on the toilet book and lap, hoping that if I fall unconscious my mother will open the door and find me the next time, she has to use it. I did one last check over deciding my pants should be around my ankles, if I was found just sitting on the toilet, it would be a tad bit odd. With that done I took a hair sized string of chakra from the tenketsu at the very top of the head, and guided it down to the prefrontal cortex, and started cycling it, then back to my tenketsu, while thinking that I could afford to lose some short term memory. Nothing seemed to happen. I continued sending chakra through my brain, and proceeded to read the book on my lap. Again no noticeable success, but no failure either. 
I figured no success would come from my half-assed attempt, but continued nonetheless. I ran a second string of chakra to the hippocampus, and repeated the process. I took a look at the book, read a few sentences, and looked away recalling them word for word vividly right away. Success. Overjoyed with my success I continued to flip through the book, slowing my perception, enhancing my short and long-term memory, trying to see if I could memorize the whole book it was working. I could recall everything I'd seen and read, a grin stretched across my face, only to leave as quick as it came. I snapped the book closed and closed my eyes, a headache pounding behind my eyes. I felt extremely hungry and very tired. I let out a sigh, a partial success. I put the book on the back of the toilet, pulled up my pants and stumbled out of the bathroom, down the hall, and into the kitchen, planning to quietly have a midnight snack. After a day of rest missing school and training in the process I was back to experimenting late at night. Sadly it seems, much like how shadow clones can't slow their perception they can't use the memory enhancement as well, even with its obvious downsides, it's still call it a success. Though my headaches seemed to have slowly decreased the more I used it, I believed I wouldn't ever be able to permanently use it. It didn't allow me to view memories only creating very vivid new ones. The short-term memory enchantment only seemed to work with the long-term enhancement and vice versa. The skill memory enhancement has yet to be tried. The book claimed that the cerebellum is responsible for learning and memorizing new motor skills like Carter's. I believe that the Sharingan move copy thing probably had something to do with this part of the brain as well. I had high hopes that I could run around copying moves like I had a Sharingan, but like the long-term memory enhancement, didn't make pre-existing memories clearer the same most likely apply to the skill memory part of the brain. I spared a minute of thought on what I would name my memory enhancements, but came up blank. I decided to end my night, and perhaps come back the other memory enhancement later, maybe after it burned some medical texts into my brain. A few weeks passed I was in my much too large classroom, in the protagonist's seat burning a book about the respiratory system into my brain, no longer experiencing a headache for a couple of minutes of use. I had made explosive progress in memorizing the medical books needed to use medical jutsu, compared to before when it took six months to memorize what is now three weeks memorization. It was extremely impressive, some would call it extremely youthful. Yes, I was very youthful indeed. I spared a second to look at Guy. Yes, most youthful. It's since added chakra scalpels to my medical jutsu repertoire. I've also started to practice something I call medical mode, which is just me circulating medical chakra around my body and speeding up my already impressive regeneration. Improvement aside, I had very little experience using medical jutsu on humans, only animals. They're pretty much the same thing. Right, left. I was sitting beside an extremely excited guy. We were doing Konhoa's equivalent of a midterm test today to decide who moves up a grade who goes down, and who stays where they are. I believe this is when Kakashi advances to the final grade to join what must be Abito's and Rin's class. I might advance as well. I've got some impressive Tojutsu, average ninjutsu, impressive medical jutsu, but very mediocre written grades, as I never really paid attention and sometimes stopped halfway through assignments, handing them in half blank when I got bored. The written test was alright if an answer took too long to write it half acid. I couldn't be bothered to explain my reasoning, mainly due to general laziness. I decided that I'd leave my advancement up to fate, and not try my hardest on the written test. The tests were soon collected and the next part of the test started, we went through some physical exercise. The teacher marking when a student dropped out. That finished we were lead back to the classroom, most of the class sweaty and miserable looking, Kakashi. Guy and I standing out looking rather unruffled. The final test started, slowly person after person left the room, some returning some not, and midway through it was my turn. I was brought into a cleared classroom, and made to stand in in front of a group of three teachers. They made me go through the academy carters, then the academy three, and told me to go to room 2A, which I guess meant I passed and had been moved up. I walked into my new classroom and stared at a brawling Kakashi and Abito, who could only have been Rin tried to break up the fight with no success. I ignored whatever that was and looked towards my favorite seat only to find it already taken by a brown haired average Joe nonetheless. I refocused back to the Hattic Slasher Chiha brawl and started thinking about ways to get average Joe to give up my seat. I was scared out of my thoughts by a loud, break it up brats, from directly behind me. Note to self, perhaps don't stand in doorways. It's been three weeks since the academy's midterm. I of course passed. Guy did not. Guy was extremely upset. A river of youthful tears streamed down his face. And he promised to train ten times as hard to catch up to his most youthful friend. I asked Guy if he wanted me to wait for him so he could catch up to me. As I didn't mind doing so. Guy answered with a youthful no. We had a rather touching moment. Don't let anything stir you.
you from your path you have drawn for yourself. Forge ahead until the end. Stick to it, Shiro. Make me proud. Be everything you can be. Guy finished it with his nice guy pose. A thumbs up and a sparkle on his teeth. Thanks, Guy. That was extremely youthful. I return my nice guy pose. A double thumbs up. Youth is infectious. I stood alone in the center of training ground three white hair lightly blowing in the breeze. This training ground was the training ground the current third Hokage trained the Sanin, and where Kakashi will train his future team. I figured that since this training ground birthed and will birth legends, that maybe some of that would rub off on me. I recently wrote all I could remember from the Naruto timeline, only to immediately trash it afterward. I figured that my presence has probably changed things, and I shouldn't count on what I had seen to be accurate, seeing as it was 10-ish years away anyway. I didn't need to worry for a while. I instead decided to make a timeline and burn it into my brain. Though Kishimoto himself didn't know the timeline I thought I'd give it a shot I put my birth about 15.5 years before the Ninetales attack Butani Goltrums. Guy, Rin, and Abito were at 17, Butani Goltrums Kakashi is about 2 to 3 years younger. Then than them so 15 Butani Goltrums Kakashi graduates at 5. I put that at 9 tenths Butani Goltrums I wasn't sure. Abito and Rin graduate at 9 y 5 ish Butani Goltrums Kakashi becomes Chunin, Abito does not 5 Butani Goltrums Sumako. Causes War 4 Butani Goltrum's Third Shinobi War. 5 4 Butani Goltrum's Sakumo dies for Butani Goltrum's Itachi birth. 5 Butani Goltrum's Third Shinobi War for 2 years. 4 2 Butani Goltrum's Abito dies. Meets Old Man Madara 1 2 Butani Goltrum's Minato Hokage 1.5 ish BNT Naruto conceived 0.9 BNT and 9 Tails attack 0 NTA. I figured it was at least something close to that, though I wondered what training Madara gave Abito. That let him contend with the fourth Hokage in just two years. Although the timeline was made with half-forgotten memories and patched together with shabby detective work, I was somewhat confident that it was close. My only major problem seemed to be Itachi. I figured he was five to seven years old when the Nine Tails attacked, but I wasn't sure. Going by my current timeline if Kakashi graduates this year that means I had four or so years until the war. That isn't a lot of time. When I had this realization I panicked for a while. After stewing in panic for a while. I decided that it was time to get back to work. I was standing alone in the center of what was called the third training ground. White hair lightly blowing in the breeze. Half blank, but soon to be filled war monument to my back. This was the training ground the current third Hokage trained the Sanin, and where Kakashi will train his future team. I figured that since this training ground birthed and will birth legends, that maybe some of that would rub off on me. Anyway, I was here to practice the body flicker or shunshin, while a clone practiced medical jutsu on the fish in the nearby river. The shunshin was pretty much enhancing your legs with chakra, while pushing chakra onto the surface of your body, to eliminate dragon resistance, caused by the air around us, reducing the limiters. The atmosphere puts on your speed, which increasing your acceleration considerably. Not hard which is why it is considered a D-ranked jutsu. I was both normally using shunshin and using it with my perception enhancement, now aptly named Chikaki Kaoka. It is just perception enhancement in Naruto vs Japanese, as one could tell I was very creative. Using Chikaki Kaoka allowed great control during shunshin, being unable to control the shunshin was the reason Ninja didn't use it in combat. The exceptions being Shisui with his Sharingan and possibly A the Rakage with however he slowed his perception. I believe the Rakage's lightning armor was a shunshin lightning release combo. I hope to achieve the speed both Shisui and A will be known for. But I was having little luck, it seemed I wouldn't get instant speed. My first problem was that the shunshin was tearing. Easy PC just build up my stamina. Something I could do, though it was something that took time. My second problem was that using the shunshin only took my speed up to high Chunin level, which was a great increase as it was mid Genin level before. I had expected I instantly jumped to Jonin speed, but I guess my expectations were too high. Again, the solution was simple. I just had to build up my base speed. No problem. So, the solution to my problems seemed to be training which was great as I loved simple solutions. What was not great however was that any bodily training I was doing wasn't as effective as before. I simply wasn't improving as fast as I once was. There's a limit to a 5 year old's body. And it seems I've about reached it. This is what caused me to think of the shunshin in the first place. And although I already had another solution, it wasn't one I was happy with. Trying to stimulate or activate the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland releases the human growth hormone which controls the physical growth of the body. I certainly didn't have good enough medical knowledge to do so safely. And I didn't want to grow to 7 feet tall and look like sloth from the Goonies. I thought the body did good enough on its own. I decided perhaps I should visit an expert. The good thing is I knew the most youthful expert in Kanoha. Popping my clone and absorbing its memories. I set off in search of said expert. My trip to said expert was delayed, as he was out of Kanoha on a mission. I instead sought out Takama. 
the next best but least youthful expert I knew. My trip to Takuma was also delayed. A branch member told me that I had to attend a meeting with Elder Kakuzo tomorrow. It seems that I won't find an answer to my problems today. Or tomorrow for that matter. I didn't know what the Elder wanted. Or who he was. I hoped fate would be merciful. And I would not be ganged up on and sealed. I was paranoia given human form. I had faith I could kill a couple of people before they sealed me. Maybe make them think twice about future sealings. First, before any drastic action was taken. I had to go ask my mother who this Kakuzo was, and see if she knew what he wanted, as she was the child of an elder. I figured she might know who he was, and what he wanted. I arrived home and the moment of truth came. Mother, Elder Kakuzo requested my presence tomorrow, and thanks, very helpful. Could you tell me who he is? I'm unfamiliar with the name I asked. She slowly blinked at me and I blinked back in reply. The former clan head, do you know what he wants with me? She blew a breath out of her nose, looked away, and said, Clan members are taught more about the Byakugan when they are deemed responsible enough. I held back a relived breath from escaping my mouth, and enjoyed the feeling of tension leavening my body. I mumbled a quick thank you Okasama and scurried away, wanting to escape to my room. I heard a muffled dress nicely tomorrow. As I closed my door I always dress nicely. And by nicely I meant youthfully. When I tried to leave the next morning, I was stopped by my mother and promptly told to leave my youthful green jumpsuit at home. I went back to my room without argument, putting on a black and grey yukata, and finally leavening the house under my mother's approving gaze. But the joke was on her. Halfway to the elder's house I shared my yukata revealing my youthful jumpsuit for the world to see. You may be able to slow it down. But you cannot stop the power of youth. I arrived at the elder's house knocked on the door and waited. A branch member opened the doorstep to the side and made a motion for me to enter. After taking off my shoes, I was led down the hall to a room and told to wait. I had a quick look around, admiring the calligraphy that hung on the wall, and then seated myself at the chabudai. After very little time an old man with brown hair walked in and then paused to admire my youthful attire but then continued and sat cross-legged at the chabudai. Let's get started I have better things to do than teach you. He sneered at me. Asshole I being a youthful gentleman pleasantly smiled back. Yes elder, let's not waste your time. After all, you don't have much left HMFP, unlike the Sharingan, which do not manifest unless the users meet certain conditions. The Byakugan is present from the time of birth, the elder blabbered on, totally ignoring my verbal jab. Unlike a Sharingan that has been transplanted, the Byakugan when trained can be activated and deactivated at will, making it highly coveted, more so than the Sharingan are. Something I didn't know, maybe this will be worthwhile. Wielders of the Byakugan have a near 360 degrees field of vision around themselves, save for a small blind spot at the back of the neck, I've changed my mind. The Byakugan's vision can penetrate almost any object, allowing users to see through walls, peer underground, or even examine the contents of a person's body, only certain barriers can block a Byakugan's sight. The elder paused and took a sip of tea, that was provided by a branch member while he was talking. We use one of these barriers in every house in the compound for privacy. The elder set his cup down, took a deep breath and continued. Users of the Byakugan can focus their vision on anything and everything within the Byakugan's range, allowing them to monitor individuals from out of range or to quickly survey a vast area and pinpoint specific locations I'm not the only one that learned the telescopic vision. It seems common actually. The exact range of the Byakugan varies between users, but can be improved with training. The Byakugan can see Chakra to a greater degree than the Sharingan I felt a tinge of disgust at the smug look on his face when he said it. This enables users to distinguish clones from their original, and even identify specific individuals' chakra signatures. The Byakugan's ability to see chakra is acute enough to see the chakra pathway system within a target's body, and the 361 Tenketsu that run along with it are clan, devise the gentle fist style of combat, specifically to take advantage of this ability. Wherein they strike an opponent's Tenketsu to either seal or forcibly open them, thus giving the user complete control over their opponent's chakra. I waited for him to continue, but it seems that was it. Any questions? Perhaps not. Yes, Elder. What's the average range of the Byakugan? The range of the Byakugan varies, sometimes being 22 meters and sometimes being 20 kilometers. That's not really what I asked, but okay. Time to get out of here. Still seated I lightly bowed at the waist. Thank Elder for expanding my horizons, may I be excused? Yes, leave my house. He showed me with his hand. I stood up, gave another small bow, and started to leave. I figured it already dug myself a hole, it didn't matter how deep it was anymore. I continued on my way throwing one last jab over my shoulder as I left. Thank you Elder. I admire how you don't care about how you come across. Rudeness causes me to behave most unyouthfully. The day after I met with the Elder, 
I went and sought out Takuma searching for answers to my lack of physical progress. The answer was disappointing, apparently it not necessary and detrimental for 5 year olds to bulk up. I was told to wait a few years, improve and expand on my techniques while continuously training, and that it gets stronger naturally. It was not what I wanted to hear, but probably what I need to hear. I forgot I was considered 5 years old, and what I had done was impressive enough. I decided to shrink my physical training schedule a bit. I didn't need to train my body in all my spare time. I decided that it was time I finished my third memory enhancement, and discovered the limits of my regeneration, something I had been putting off for a while. I was back in the third training ground, mutilating myself with a kunai in the name of science. Although there was no actual science being done, I decided to do the hardest thing first so as not to put it off farther. I discovered some useful things about my regeneration. It seems that all cells in the wounded area become super active and duplicate themselves at an insane pace. I don't understand how they don't become cancerous, or how they know what they should and should not repair. This process is a tad bit similar to the cell activation jutsu, something used to increase a patient's survival rate during risky surgeries. Though in my case it was completely automatic. The natural tearing of muscles for some reason don't heal until I'm at full rest and taking a break. Any cuts, punctures, and deep gashes healed very quickly. It took about 30 seconds for them to disappear. Any chunks of flesh taken from the body took a little longer, clocking in at about 1 minute. And it increased chakra cost. Broken fingers healed the quickest, doing so about 15 seconds after they had been realigned. Foreign objects will be pushed from the wounds before healing is completed. Not mattering if you seal the top of the wound to prevent exit, foreign objects must exit the body for healing to start. I did the same with medical mode active, and it was a great success. Wounds healed as they were created, at a huge cost in chakra though. A finger I cut off with a chakra scalpel did not regrow, but when placed back against the stump it healed very quickly. I assume that it's the same with other limbs. But I don't dare to try. After cutting my finger off I was at my limit of what I could do and decided that was it for the day. All in all, my regeneration makes zero sense. I'd call this a very traumatizing but successful day, definitely not something I will do again. It's been a week since I was the last experimenting with my healing. I couldn't muster the will required to do anything but my normal training until now. So again, here I stand in the third training ground. This time running through carters while cycling a fine thread of chakra through my cerebellum to enhance my skill memory. I then went through my carters again this time with any enhancement. It seems it worked, though I'm not sure how well. I was already very familiar with the Hayuga set of carters. That's annoying. So again, here I stand this time running through the academy carters. My only other known to jutsu style while cycling a fine thread of chakra through my cerebellum. I stopped my enhancement and then my carters. I started the carters, becoming annoyed with myself that I hadn't got it right the first time. Okay, it was definitely much better. Like the other enhancements it didn't make existing memory better, just cemented memories done during the enhancement, in this case, skill memory. The problem I hadn't considered was that I wasn't just burning the carter into my mind. I was also burning any flaws I made into it as well. Not a huge problem. I just had to get the movements right, then enhance my mind. The other problem I had considered was that I'd need the necessary muscle to go through any motion learned this way. There would be no doing it once and knowing it forever. But it would be pretty close, and that was enough. I sent two clones off to do as they please. I was headed to the clan library, looking for the next set of books to burn into my brain. In the time between my last training and now, I had come up with a name for my memory enhancement. I being too lazy to make a name for each one, decided on one name to rule them all. Kokoro no Kaoka. All mind enhancement in Naruto vs Japanese. Very creative. And not at all similar to Chikaku no Kaioka. Nope. I arrived at the library, nodded to the guard, whom I see often, and had become familiar with and continued in. The Hyugas had a wealth of information, jutsu scrolls stashed in cubbies, shelves lined with books of all sizes. It was sadly a disorganized mess. No labels, often no titles on the books. Some of the books were just loosely stacked papers with a string holding it together. As I said, a mess, there was no system here. Sure everything was maintained and taken care of, but only the staff knew the location of any specific book or scroll. Knowing that from experience, I went to my favorite staff member and asked for what I needed. The staff member recommended an additional scroll, so I took that as well. I took a seat at a nearby table and started burning my first scroll and original goal into my mind. Earth release. Hiding like a mole jutsu this technique changes earth into fine sand by channeling chakra into it, allowing the user to dig through it. Like a mole this effect goes around the body, making it just large enough for a person to move through. The user can pinpoint where they are, despite being underground, by sensing the magnetic forces. The user can also sense what is happening on the surface, and use that information to launch a surprise attack on the enemy one. 
can also hide deep in the ground, escaping to a depth where the enemy can't reach, the ground returns to normal, after the user's chakra has dissipated. That done I open the second scroll earth release. Drill rending fang the jutsu was a copy of the hiding like a mole jutsu, the only difference was that you launched yourself out of the ground using a variation of water walking and body enhancement. I'd burned that into my mind as well, figuring it might be worthwhile if I was already learning a similar technique. That done I headed off to seek out Takuma. Hoping to get some advice on Earth Nature transformation. Sukuma was useless, a new trend it seems. I was told my time was better spent elsewhere, and I should put off nature transformation until I had a Jonin Sensei. Sukuma had become less help the more things I mastered, although he still has things to teach me at the moment. I might need to look into interning at the hospital. I need experience working with the human bow. My thought was interrupted by one of my clones dispersing. I needed some practice healing the human body. I had hoped to get some during the war, but that was too far off. And if I were to need to leave the village, I wouldn't be able to complete my medical jutsu repertoire. To make any more progress I had to learn from a professional, Kanoha kept most of its medical techniques among the trustworthy high-ranking medical staff. The clan had to pull some strings to get me the medical books I had, a point in their favor. They're still assholes that enslaved their family. But so am I, I hadn't done anything to help the branch family. My thoughts were interrupted again by a new influx of memories this time from the second clone. One clone had henged into my old teacher, the forgettable looking Chunin, and had gone to the library to sneak a look at some scrolls restricted to Chunin, mainly in the hopes of finding more stuff on chakra control. The second clone on the hand had gotten into some trouble. The second clone decided that since his life was short, and he didn't have to deal with the consciences of his actions, he should have a grand old time. The clone's idea of a good time was egging the Yamanaka residence, Henjdus Kakashi. He had been caught in the act by some patrolling ninja, so he egged them too. Deciding that there wasn't any reason to stop, he slipped the ninja and bought more eggs. Egged the Akamichi clan head's house, and for the sake of completion, he got a passing Nara as well. All he got was a troublesome in reply. His rampage was about over. His last act was sneaking into the Hokage Tower, hoping to egg the Hokage. Alas, he did not make it. He was assassinated when he ran past the receptionist. I sighed something new I figured out. You can leave a connection to clones to check up on them, and manually control them when needed. It was completely optional. It is mostly used to share thoughts and cooperate when fighting. I had foregone this link today, figuring it'd need my full focus. That was a mistake. I'm glad the Rouge clone had the foresight to make its shenanigans Kakashi's problem. The unlikable bastard. I wish everyone he loved could die a little faster. It did wonders for his personality in canon. That was uncalled for. I massaged my eyes with my finger and thumb. I was getting grumpy. Perhaps it's time to turn in for the day. I was roof hopping back towards the library. Henged as my forgettable academy teacher. I noticed a bald old man with a huge beard, breaking from the crowd. His hand on his chest like he was having a heart attack. I stop and stared at him. He stumbled down an alleyway and dropped to his knees, panting and seemingly having trouble breathing. I looked back at the crowd. No one seemed to notice. I jumped across the street onto a rooftop and down into the alley where the old man was. Are you alright, Oji-chan? I said sweetly. Sweat was dripping down his forehead, and he seemed to be barely holding it together. Call me a mednin. He looked me in the eyes, blue met white. Yes, Ojichin. I smiled. I held his gaze for a breath, leaned in, and said, you're a mednin. I said as seriously as I could. I met his disbelieving eyes, feeling rather proud of myself. No, I meant call a med. I ended his sentence with a poke to the neck knocking him out. I was just yesterday thinking about how I needed to practice my medical jutsu. A heart attack was no biggie. I dragged him farther down the alley and into the shade of the building. I knelt, activating my Byakugan, then chakra scalpels, and focusing on his heart. A few of his coronary arteries had become blocked with cholesterol buildup, something that commonly happens over time in people. I put my hand to his chest, scalpels passing through leaving him unharmed. I was about to activate the tip of the chakra scalpel to clear the buildup when I felt a small resistance. His meager chakra was trying to eject my own. Not a problem. I just had to change my chakra to match his own. I did so while increasing the density of my chakra at the same time. Nice, his chakra was no longer fighting mine. I activated the scalpels and cleared the blockage one by one. That done I used the mystical palm on his heart, just in case I missed anything. I took a look around with my Byakugan, looking for witnesses. Clear. A job well done. My impromptu heart surgery was complete. I ran up the wall and started towards my original destination, pondering what I had learned, and how I could apply it in the future. The day after I met with the elder, 
I went and sought out Takuma searching for answers to my lack of physical progress. The answer was disappointing, apparently it not necessary and detrimental for 5 year olds to bulk up. I was told to wait a few years, improve and expand on my techniques while continuously training, and that it gets stronger naturally. It was not what I wanted to hear, but probably what I need to hear. I forgot I was considered 5 years old, and what I had done was impressive enough. I decided to shrink my physical training schedule a bit. I didn't need to train my body in all my spare time. I decided that it was time I finished my third memory enhancement and discovered the limits of my regeneration, something I had been putting off for a while. I was back in the third training ground, mutilating myself with a kunai in the name of science. Although there was no actual science being done, I decided to do the hardest thing first so as not to put it off farther. I discovered some useful things about my regeneration. It seems that all cells in the wounded area become super active and duplicate themselves at an insane pace. I don't understand how they don't become cancerous, or how they know what they should and should not repair. This process is a tad bit similar to the cell activation jutsu, something used to increase a patient's survival rate during risky surgeries, though in my case it was completely automatic. The natural tearing of muscles for some reason don't heal until I'm at full rest and taking a break. Any cuts, punctures, and deep gashes healed very quickly. It took about 30 seconds for them to disappear. Any chunks of flesh taken from the body took a little longer, clocking in at about 1 minute. And it increased chakra cost. Broken fingers healed the quickest, doing so about 15 seconds after they had been realigned. Foreign objects will be pushed from the wounds before healing is completed. Not mattering if you seal the top of the wound to prevent exit, foreign objects must exit the body for healing to start. I did the same with medical mode active, and it was a great success. Wounds healed as they were created, at a huge cost in chakra though. A finger I cut off with a chakra scalpel did not regrow, but when placed back against the stump it healed very quickly. I assume that it's the same with other limbs, but I don't dare to try. After cutting my finger off I was at my limit of what I could do and decided that was it for the day. All in all, my regeneration makes zero sense. I'd call this a very traumatizing but successful day, definitely not something I will do again. It's been a week since I was the last experimenting with my healing. I couldn't muster the will required to do anything but my normal training until now. So again, here I stand in the third training ground. This time running through carters while cycling a fine thread of chakra through my cerebellum to enhance my skill memory. I then went through my carters again this time with any enhancement. It seems it worked, though I'm not sure how well. I was already very familiar with the Hayuga set of carters. That's annoying. So again, here I stand this time running through the academy carters. My only other known to jutsu style, while cycling a fine thread of chakra through my cerebellum. I stopped my enhancement and then my carters. I started the carters, becoming annoyed with myself that I hadn't got it right the first time. Okay, it was definitely much better. Like the other enhancements it didn't make existing memory better. Just cemented memories done during the enhancement, in this case, skill memory. The problem I hadn't considered was that I wasn't just burning the carter into my mind. I was also burning any flaws I made into it as well. Not a huge problem. I just had to get the movements right, then enhance my mind. The other problem I had considered was that I'd need the necessary muscle to go through any motion learned this way. There would be no doing it once and knowing it forever. But it would be pretty close, and that was enough. I sent two clones off to do as they please. I was headed to the clan library, looking for the next set of books to burn into my brain. In the time between my last training and now, I had come up with a name for my memory enhancement. I being too lazy to make a name for each one, decided on one name to rule them all. Kokoro no Kaoka. All Mind Enhancement in Naruto vs Japanese. Very creative. And not at all similar to Chikaku no Kaioka. Nope. I arrived at the library, nodded to the guard, whom I see often, and had become familiar with and continued in. The Hayugas had a wealth of information, jutsu scrolls stashed in cubbies, shelves lined with books of all sizes. It was sadly a disorganized mess. No labels, often no titles on the books. Some of the books were just loosely stacked papers with a string holding it together. As I said, a mess, there was no system here. Sure everything was maintained and taken care of, but only the staff knew the location of any specific book or scroll. Knowing that from experience, I went to my favorite staff member and asked for what I needed. The staff member recommended an additional scroll, so I took that as well. I took a seat at a nearby table and started burning my first scroll and original goal into my mind. Earth release. Hiding like a mole jutsu this technique changes earth into fine sand by channeling chakra into it, allowing the user to dig through it. Like a mole this effect goes around the body, making it just large enough for a person to move through. The user can pinpoint where they are, despite being underground, by sensing the magnetic forces. The user can also sense what is happening on the surface, 
and use that information to launch a surprise attack on the enemy one. Can also hide deep in the ground, escaping to a depth where the enemy can't reach. The ground returns to normal after the user's chakra has dissipated. That done I open the second scroll earth release. Drill rending fang the jutsu was a copy of the hiding like a mole jutsu. The only difference was that you launched yourself out of the ground using a variation of water walking and body enhancement. I'd burned that into my mind as well, figuring it might be worthwhile if I was already learning a similar technique. That done I headed off to seek out Takuma, hoping to get some advice on earth nature transformation. Takuma was useless, a new trend it seems. I was told my time was better spent elsewhere, and I should put off nature transformation until I had a Jonin sensei. Takuma had become less help the more things I mastered, although he still has things to teach me at the moment. I might need to look into interning at the hospital. I need experience working with the human bow. My thought was interrupted by one of my clones dispersing. I needed some practice healing the human body. I had hoped to get some during the war, but that was too far off. And if I were to need to leave the village, I wouldn't be able to complete my medical jutsu repertoire. To make any more progress I had to learn from a professional, Kanoha kept most of its medical techniques among the trustworthy high-ranking medical staff. The clan had to pull some strings to get me the medical books I had, a point in their favor. They're still assholes that enslave their family. But so am I, I hadn't done anything to help the branch family. My thoughts were interrupted again by a new influx of memories this time from the second clone. One clone had henged into my old teacher, the forgettable looking Chunin, and had gone to the library to sneak a look at some scrolls restricted to Chunin, mainly in the hopes of finding more stuff on chakra control. The second clone on the hand had gotten into some trouble. The second clone decided that since his life was short, and he didn't have to deal with the consciences of his actions, he should have a grand old time. The clone's idea of a good time was egging the Yamanaka residence, Henjdas Kakashi. He had been caught in the act by some patrolling ninja, so he egged them too. Deciding that there wasn't any reason to stop, he slipped the ninja and bought more eggs. Egged the Akamichi clan head's house, and for the sake of completion, he got a passing Nara as well. All he got was a troublesome in reply. His rampage was about over. His last act was sneaking into the Hokage Tower, hoping to egg the Hokage. Alas, he did not make it. He was assassinated when he ran past the receptionist. I sighed something new I figured out. You can leave a connection to clones to check up on them, and manually control them when needed. It was completely optional. It is mostly used to share thoughts and cooperate when fighting. I had foregone this link today, figuring it'd need my full focus. That was a mistake. I'm glad the Rouge clone had the foresight to make its shenanigans Kakashi's problem. The unlikable bastard. I wish everyone he loved could die a little faster. It did wonders for his personality in canon. That was uncalled for. I massaged my eyes with my finger and thumb. I was getting grumpy. Perhaps it's time to turn in for the day. I was roof hopping back towards the library. Henged as my forgettable academy teacher. I noticed a bald old man with a huge beard breaking from the crowd. His hand on his chest like he was having a heart attack. I stop and stared at him. He stumbled down an alleyway and dropped to his knees, panting and seemingly having trouble breathing. I looked back at the crowd. No one seemed to notice. I jumped across the street onto a rooftop and down into the alley where the old man was. Are you alright, Oji-chan? I said sweetly. Sweat was dripping down his forehead, and he seemed to be barely holding it together. Call me a mednin. He looked me in the eyes, blue met white. Yes, Ojichin. I smiled. I held his gaze for a breath, leaned in, and said, you're a mednin. I said as seriously as I could. I met his disbelieving eyes, feeling rather proud of myself. No, I meant call a med. I ended his sentence with a poke to the neck knocking him out. I was just yesterday thinking about how I needed to practice my medical jutsu. A heart attack was no biggie. I dragged him farther down the alley and into the shade of the building. I knelt, activating my Byakugan, then chakra scalpels, and focusing on his heart. A few of his coronary arteries had become blocked with cholesterol buildup, something that commonly happens over time in people. I put my hand to his chest, scalpels passing through leaving him unharmed. I was about to activate the tip of the chakra scalpel to clear the buildup when I felt a small resistance. His meager chakra was trying to eject my own. Not a problem. I just had to change my chakra to match his own. I did so while increasing the density of my chakra at the same time. Nice, his chakra was no longer fighting mine. I activated the scalpels and cleared the blockage one by one. That done I used the mystical palm on his heart, just in case I missed anything. I took a look around with my Byakugan, looking for witnesses. Clear. A job well done. My impromptu heart surgery was complete. I ran up the wall and started towards my original destination, pondering what I had learned, and how I could apply it in the future. 
Today was my graduation. The day I got to see what team I was put on. The tests were nothing of note, a standard written test, followed by a tojutsu match against our teacher. We were then asked to perform any additional jutsu we knew. I showed off some medical jutsu, which was impressive according to one of the teachers. So, we got a couple of days off afterward. I guess they used this time to decide the teams. I dunno. Anyway, today was graduation. Kakashi was going to Team Minato, and I was hopefully going on a Jonin team, though I applied to the hospital as well. I'd see how it goes. I got Takuma to give up on an apprenticeship, though it was accidental. Who knew Takama would be so against my youthful green jumpsuit? I just said Takama, and I should wear matching jumpsuits if we were on a team together. And he revoked his apprenticeship offer. Takuma how unyouthful. I was sitting in the classroom brand new headband on my forehead, watching my classmates leaving one by one, until it was only me and Kakashi. Fuck. Minato did not look like how I remembered him. He wore a standard Jonin flak jacket with blue pants and a blue shirt. The white cape thing with flames at the bottom. Nowhere to be seen. Oh yay, he wasn't the Hokage yet. Nor was he the yellow flash. We were seated in the shade under a tree. Minato gave a charismatic grin. Alright Team 7, why don't we introduce ourselves said grin meant nothing. And he was met with silence. He gave a shy smile and continued. My name's Minato Namikas. My likes are my girlfriend and training. My dislikes are making my girlfriend angry. And my dream for the future is to become the Hokage. More silence. Okay? Shiro-kun, how about you? My name's Shiro Hayuga. My likes are youthful training and my green jumpsuit. I dislike unyouthfulness and people who are not on time. My dream for the future is to become a figure that will be recorded in the history books. Kakashi-kun, Kakashi. My name's Kakashi Hatak. My likes are training. My dislikes are idiots and youthfulness. And my dream for the future is to be an excellent ninja. Okay, meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 6. And Minato escaped the awkwardness with a shunshin. So, wanna have a spa? I got a blank stare in reply. To better understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. Kakashi didn't answer, he just walked away. Denied. I was at training ground 7. I was here 30 minutes early, as was Kakashi. That was something I liked about him. If you're not early, you're late. Something I learned in my past life that followed me into this one. Hello. I hope you didn't wait long. Okay, today we're going to spa so we can get a feel for each other's ability. Yes, Minato-sensei. Kakashi grunted in reply. What a charmer. Okay, so it is you two against me. Start now. Minato disappeared into the trees. Did he want us to chase him? That's not going to happen. I don't want to chase someone through the forest. Nope, never mind. Kakashi seems to want this to be a chase. Kakashi took off after him. I just followed Kakashi at a comfortable distance. I figured he'd step on any traps in our way. I was activating my Byakugan every 30 seconds, while Kakashi through methods only known to him followed Minato's trail. Eventually, I spotted him. Back in the clearing, we started in. Sai Kakashi. Minato is where we started. I got a nod in reply. At least I got a response. We made our way back to the clearing. A sunny grin met us as we approached. Excellent job. Now let's spar. Minato made the seal of confrontation, then attacked before we could even enter the clearing. Kakashi jumped in first slashing at him with a short blade. I activated my Byakugan and Shikaku no Kaoka, and then Shunshine behind him trying to hit him with a gentle fist strike. Both of our attacks were rebuffed. Minato met Kakashi's blade with a kunai, and smacked my wrist away. Surprised I jumped back. Minato then grabbed Kakashi's wrist and tossed him at me. I reacted accordingly. I grabbed Kakashi, spun, and tossed him at Minato. Minato dogged and Kakashi tumbled past him. Minato raised an eyebrow at me. I raised one back at him. Kakashi tried to attack Minato while we were looking at each other. Saya spa went on for another 30 minutes. It ended with an unconscious Kakashi when Minato used his head to block one of my one-for-all punches. Sai, I was knelt next to Kakashi, and using the mystical palm on his head. I played on healing him just enough to avoid a concussion. The rest could be done by a proper mednin. Minato was standing next to us looking rather unruffled. That was well done Shirokun. I place your Tajutsu at high Chunin, and your Chakra Reserves at Jonin level. You just need more experience against different opponents. Thank you Sensei. Your medical ninjutsu is impressive as well. I nodded too busy fighting off Kakashi's Chakra to reply. Your teamwork on the other hand needs improvement. Kanoha values teamwork because Kakashi eventually woke. He got a similar speech, though his Tajutsu was rated much lower than mine as was his Chakra Reserves. Haha. <laughs> Suck it Kakashi. I tried not to look smug, but Kakashi's glare said that I failed. Okay team there's not a lot I need to teach you, 
So we're going to get straight into missions, with some sparing in between. We were standing in front of the Hokage ready to get our first mission. This was my first time seeing him in person. Though he didn't look too old he still showed signs of age. Minato started us off with his usual charismatic grin. Team 7 reporting for duty. Team 7, I have a very important mission for you. Kakashi perked up. Your mission is to head to the Matsuzaki residence and vanquish the weeds that have taken up residence in Miss Amiko's garden. Any enthusiasm Kakashi had must have died a quick death as his shoulders dropped. Would you like some water dears? Amiko Matsuzaki was a kind elderly woman who was barely making it around without her cane. Her kindness didn't make this job any less annoying though. No thanks Miss Matsuzaki Kakashi just shook his head. Yes please, all this hard work is making me thirsty. Minato of course had done nothing but sit with his back to the fence and had no reason to be thirsty. Asterisk THUNK asterisk the kunai Kakashi threw at Minato showed how he felt about that. I figured Minato had enough fun at Kakashi's expense, so I went through the hand signs and summoned three shadow clones to pick up the pace. The work was done in no time. The look of disappointment on Minato's face warmed my heart. Want to run through some more D ranks today? Kakashi gave me a look filled with disdain. No, you sure? The faster we get these done the sooner we can start on some real missions. Kakashi changed his tune pretty fast. Let's get this over with. We ran through three more missions that day with very liberal use of the Shadow Clone Jutsu. A week had gone by, and we had averaged five missions a day. Needless to say, it was time for some C ranks. Normally it takes teams a month and a half to get through 20 D ranks. So, congratulations on completing 34 in such a short time. The Hokage took a path from his pipe. Sadly, I must ask you to stop. We're running out of missions to send new graduates on. I stood head bowed. Sorry, Hokage Sama. The Hokage blew some smoke out of his nose, making me think of an annoyed dragon. It seems that you won't learn anything doing D-rank missions, so I'm sending you on a C-ranked one instead. Hopefully, you can develop some teamwork while you escort a merchant to the land of hot water, you're dismissed. Minato stepped forward and received a scroll. We all filed out and met at the base of the tower. Alright we leave in two days, does anyone need help packing? I shook my head, no sensei, and Kakashi shook his head as well. Alright, meet me at the west gate at 6, it'll see you then, and Minato was off leaving behind a swell of leaves. Want to shop together Kakashi? No. Well, at least he responded, usually he doesn't. Progress. I spent my two free days in youthful training with Guy. After some training we took a break and went shopping for some stuff I would need. I made sure to stock up on jumpsuits, as I had been running low for a while. I took the time to buy Guy some shuriken and kunai. I didn't know if he would use then, but at least he had some if he ever had the urge. After another round of training, we went to Guy's house to visit Dai. Dai was exhausted as he had reached a new level with the gates and was recovering in his home. I came over and repaired his body to the best of my ability, and we had a nice chat about escort missions, and what I should watch out for. All in all, I had a youthful break before my mission. I was at the west gate standing by Kakashi and trying to make conversation. I was asking Kakashi if had started nature transformation yet and what elements he had an affinity for. Kakashi wasn't interested, he walked a distance from me and sat down. All right then. Minato arrived with the client breaking up the awkward atmosphere that bothered me, but probably didn't phase Kakashi. The merchant arrived on a horse-drawn cart that was covered in canvas, and presumably filled with his goods. The merchant was fat, not an acceptable fat. He was so fat that his eyes were pushed closed by the fat around his face. He was the first fat person I had seen since my rebirth. I had to remind myself not to stare. Boys, this is Futoda Yarrow. We will be escorting him to the land of hot springs, specifically Yugika. Nice to meet you, Futoda Sama Kakashi gave a shallow bow. Fatty got impatient and told us to get going. All right, let's set off. Yes, Futoda Sama. Minato was making conversation with Fatty, subtly fishing for information on what business Fatty had in the land of hot water. Turns out he was just here to offload his goods from Kanoha and to get potatoes from hot springs. And some of their famed spring water if the prices were right predictably. The fatty was going there for food and drink it took us four days to get to the land of hot springs. Minato and fatty had become fast friends and now are chatting like they had grown up together. Minato had taught us a simple E-rank camping jutsu so we could start fires if we needed to in the future. The land of hot springs still had its reluctant shinobi force at this time. So now and then as we made our way through their territory and into the village, I could see them jumping through the trees and patrolling the roads. Though they made me nervous Yugika Shinobi had a reputation for pacifism, so I wasn't overly worried, though I wondered if I'd meet Haydn. Still, I figured it was unlikely. We saw Fatty off at the gate and made our way into the village after getting visitor passes. I was happy to ditch the Fatty, as I was worried that a bandit scare would give the Fatty a heart attack, 
and we would fail the mission. Though I could treat him I doubted the client getting hurt was good for my ninja resume. With that load off my shoulders I was following Minato with a bounce in my step. We stopped at a two-story building with a sign on it that had the kanji for hot springs on it. Alright, I'm going to get us a room at this inn. Kakeshi you're free to explore just be back before sunset. Yes sensei, Shiro you're with me. And with that, I and Minato were off to the inn. It was the second day of a stay in Yugika. Kakashi had been allowed to wander free again. I, on the other hand, had to stay with Minato. Apparently the Hyuga complained about the possibility of my Byakugan being stolen when Minato wasn't looking. So until I'm officially Chunin rank, I'm not allowed to be unaccompanied unless absolutely necessary. Whether they did this to annoy me or they were genuinely worried about me losing my eyes was a temporary mystery. Minato and I were sitting in the hot springs together. Was this Minato's idea of bonding? Minato Sensei. Yes, Shiro Kun. I heard you're good at Fuinjutsu. That I am Shiro Kun. Minato raised an eyebrow at me. Could you put a gravity seal on me? I could do you understand how they work? I did somewhat, but the information was sparse in both the Hyuga library and the public library. Yes, the seal has 50 levels, doubling your body weight every level you advance. I knew the seal had nothing to do with gravity. The author just didn't have a better name for it. That's as far as my knowledge on the seal went. Raising the level before you're ready can crush your bones, organs, and rip your muscles if not instantly kill you. Ouch. I sat in silent thought, wondering if my healing factor could handle that. I'll do it for you. If you're sure you want it. Regardless of the slight possibility of death I still wanted it. Yes please, Minato Sensei I still want it. Okay? We can do it when we get back to Kanoha. It's not safe to do it outside of the village. It was our third day in the village. And we were ready to set off. I had my fill of the hot springs. And was ready to leave and get back to training. Though hopefully with a new gravity seal. We left the village without any trouble. Kakashi seemed to be in a better mood than when we got to the village. Minato might have also felt better. Though I didn't know, he always seemed happy and cheerful, so I couldn't tell. We walked in comfortable silence. I activated my Byakugan every 5 minutes using this opportunity for training. The land of hot springs was heavily patrolled, so we wouldn't be running into rogue nin or bandits at least until we get into the land of fire. Our trip through the land of fire was peaceful as well. Without that tub of lard slowing us down, it only took us a day to travel back to Kanoha. We arrived at the gate, the guards barely glanced at our papers and sent us in. Minato kindly reminded us to fill out our mission reports and have them filed tomorrow. And then we'd have two days off. Kakashi ran off as soon as he was able, leaving Minato and I standing at the gate staring at his back as he ran off. Minato let out a sigh and rubbed the back of his head. I feel you sensei Minato. When can we get that seal done? Minato hummed for a second while scratching his chin. We'll do it in two days, it'll come get you when I'm ready. He sent me what I guess was a goodbye nod and vanished in a shunshin. Leaving me standing at the gate I blew one last breath out of my nose, and decided that today's lunch was going to be takeout. Yakitori maybe. Perhaps Guy and Dai would like some yakitori. I spent the rest of my break training my Byakugan in my room. I didn't feel like interacting with people for a while. After spending time with Guy and Dai, after two weeks of interacting with Kakashi on a daily basis. As Minato had said he would, he came and got me on the last day of our break, and brought me to his apartment. I figured there would need to be some sort of room for sealing, as I vaguely remembered Kakashi taking Sasuke to one to seal his curse mark. But I guess I was wrong. Kishina was extremely cheerful. Before I could take my sandals off, I was picked up and brought to the couch where I was hugged and called cute Kishina, then complimented my hair, saying that she was envious of its shine and softness. I was then placed on the floor in front of her, and Kishina started braiding my hair. This happened too fast for me to process and I was left feeling confused about how I should react. I decided that this was fine, and that I should get used to it as this would probably happen more in the future. Yet yeah, totally fine. I heard Kishina ask about my shampoo. I told her I had no idea, as I didn't, and I wanted this to end as soon as possible. Kishina-sama. Yes, Shiro-kun. Um, I'm here to get a seal done. Could you let me go? She blew a loud breath out of her mouth. EFFF? Fine, just let me finish this braid, and call me Kishina Shiro-kun. I made eye contact with Minato who winked at me. Um, yes, then call me Shiro as well Kishina. Oh, you're so cute. I was indeed cute, I agree. I was made to sit down and have dinner with the couple. I had hoped to escape after the seal was done, but Minato must have predicted this as he had suggested, that we should have lunch before the sealing starts, so as to not have empty stomachs later. I looked at him from across the table. He looked innocent, but I didn't buy it, revenge would be had. We stared at each other for a moment, 
Though I did enjoy having a proper table and not a chabudai. The dinner was nice now that I was not being manhandled and had my own space. Though of course, we had Raymond. Kishina dominated the conversation asking me about my life and training what I wanted to do and learn. I answered to the best of my ability giving a brief summary of my home situation, that I wanted to be a medic nin, and that my affinity was lightning, and that I hoped to learn nature transformation. She looked a bit upset when I talked about my home life, though she didn't say anything so I left it at that. I was about to give up on the gravity seal, and come back another day when Minato said we should get the sealing underway before the day ends. I looked out the window at the setting sun. Yes, let's get this over with. The seal was vaguely sword shaped with a spiral enclosed by a circle where the pommel would be, there was a blank spot in the center of the pommel, where a number would show up, representing what level the gravity seal was at. I stood in Minato's bathroom looking at the mirror eyeing my new tattoo. I had the seal put on my upper right arm just below the shoulder. It looked better than I imagined it would. With my jumpsuit sleeves, no one would see it. Perfect, I was again being manhandled by Kishina on the couch, listening to Minato explain the operation of the gravity seal. He explained that to increase the seal's level, I just had to pump chakra into it until I feel the change in weight. To release the seal I have to form the rat seal or safe you in. Release and the weight will be returned to normal. Explanation done I extracted myself from Kishina's grasp and made my way home. I feel like I might have taken Kakashi's place. Right now I seem to be the favored student canon was already trashed when I was born. So what's a little more matter? I was up early in the third training ground getting ready to activate the first level of the seal before our team training. I was about 45 pounds. So when I activated the seal it should double it. I took my time to limber up and stretch. I didn't want to pull any muscles after all. I pushed Chakra into the seal little by little taking care not to accidentally jump up a couple of levels at a time I hit the first level. Thank my past self for sitting down if I hadn't. I would have for sure eaten some dirt. The weight wasn't heavy per se just surprising. I was running around the training ground getting used to the new weight. I had 10 minutes until team training, so I formed the rat seal and released the seal. I then took a quick dip in the river and ran off to training ground 7. I met a grumpy Kakashi who was also 30 minutes early. Why are you wet? I ignored his question. Good morning as well Kakashi I sat in the sun enjoying its warmth. I was mentally revising my training schedule to include training with the gravity seal. I'd have to learn how to fight and jump when my weight was increased. I'd also have to do the same with kunai throwing as well. Sign more stuff to do Minato arrived in a swirl of leaves. I was still seated in the middle of the clearing, enjoying the sun. Kakashi was throwing shuriken at a target some distance away. Okay boys today we'll do some light sparring, and then set up our schedule. He meant light sparring for him, not for Kakashi or me. It was decided that we would do 2 to 4 C ranks a month. We would either do 4 short ones over a month or 2 long ones over a month. So 2-4 missions per month mainly because I wanted to get time at the hospital. Kakashi was not happy. He snarled at me. You are holding us back. We should be able to do more missions than that. I decided to egg him on a bit. Kakashi. If you fan your flames of youth nothing can hold you back. I finished with my nice guy pose. A double thumbs up with a large grin on my face. Kakashi tried to attack me. But Minato intervened and dragged him away in his shunshin. I was still in the clearing reflecting. I felt a bit regretful that I egged him on. But I couldn't have known that would set him off like that I sighed and cracked my knuckles. Time to practice with the gravity seal the team met up again the day after. Though this time I was under the full effect of the gravity seal. I had put a request to work under one of the medical men at the hospital. We would see how that goes when we get back as we had another mission to go on today. Kakashi was still mad at me and hadn't acknowledged my presence. I wasn't sure if I should apologize or not. So, we sat in silence until Minato arrived. Not that it was different than any other day. Minato arrived and ignored the awkward atmosphere. So, are we doing long missions this month or short missions? Kakashi was silent, as was I Minato decided for us. Short it is then. Kakashi and Minato went to get the mission scroll. I split up with them and went to leave some takeout in Guy's fridge. Dai was out on a mission, so I figured I'd put some of that D rank mission money to use. We met up at the Hokage Tower. Today's mission was a background investigation. Some rich guy wanted to know if his wife was cheating on him. A fun mission if I do say so myself. I figured that most of the work would rely on me using my Byakugan to catch the wife in the act. Though hopefully, that wasn't the case. I figured it would be a good opportunity to train my Byakugan regardless of what happens. Minato told us to meet him at the southern gate in one hour, and that I would get a debriefing on the way there. We were headed to Otofukugai. Our mission was to deliver proof of one Inutakia's infidelity. Not a mission I wanted to do, 
But whatever Otofuki Gai was 12 kilometers from Kinova, so it would be a short hour long trip before we arrived. After a short trip we arrived at Otofuki Gai. The city was filled with hotels, gambling dens, and brothels. But at least the city was somewhat clean looking I was seated on top a hotel where I had been told not to move from. I was waiting for Minato and Kakashi to return. It was decided that they would do most of the leg work, as I would be staring at our target most of the time. Minato and Kakashi had to meet with the client, get another picture of the target, and then find their location. Then it would be my turn to stare at Inui until something happens where Kakashi would then swoop in and take a picture. Sounds easy. Minato came back bringing with him additional news. Our target who was the third wife of our client whom he had just married six months ago. She had been traveling to Otofuki Gai and staying at a hotel overnight once a month for a few months. Our client got suspicious and wanted to know what was up. So, we were supposed to take photos of whatever happened tonight and give them to the client. Not a problem. Minato took me to the building the target was staying in where we met up with an already waiting Kakashi. It was pretty fancy, but it wasn't a love hotel. So I guess that was a point in her favor. We decided to take residence on the roof and prepare for a long day of watching our target. Said target left to get lunch at a fancy restaurant. I told Kakashi and Minato that this was theirs, and they could watch her for a while. I wasn't very inconspicuous after all. Though neither were Kakashi or Minato for that matter. Saya target came back to the hotel, Minato and Kakashi trailing after her. I watched her with my Byakugan, she started to change her clothes. So I deactivated my Byakugan to give her some privacy. Our target was headed out again Kakashi, and I was staring at each other. Kakashi made a shooing motion with his hand telling me to follow her. I looked to Minato hoping he would volunteer to follow her. He also made a shooing motion. Come on. What happened to me and you not separating Minato? He went at me, with his index finger over his mouth. Say ch 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 alright that works and he wandered around the shopping district. She didn't buy anything she just browsed the merchant's wares. Finally, something happened. Inui met up with a young man probably a few years younger than her. They chatted and laughed and strolled around the market a little more, before they went to have some dinner at a restaurant. I watched them dine at the restaurant through the walls. Nothing romantic, they just seemed to be catching up. I followed both of them towards the hotel. Finally, they made their way inside, and I made my way to the roof. I explained her activities with Minato and Kakashi, only getting a hum from Minato with no response from Kakashi. I was seated watching as the duo made their way towards Inui's room. The young man gave Inui a firm hug, and set off leaving her at the door. What seriously? I explained what I saw to the team. Kakashi take a picture of him before he leaves Kakashi disappeared with a nod. Sigh we still had to keep watch to see if something happened overnight. Nothing did we met up with the client the next day. A tall, skinny black haired, brown eyed man. We explained our findings and showed him the picture we took of the man when he saw the picture. He laughed. Oh. Ha ha, that's her brother Yamashiro. Ugh, what a waste of time. The client signed the mission as complete and we were off. I asked Minato about the mission ranking as we were on our way back. I figured we would be fighting bandits and missing Nin. But so far, we were still doing easy non-combat jobs. I'll go over the mission ranks that we will likely do together. Minato took a deep breath and started speaking not slowing his pace. E rank missions are assigned to Genin fresh from the academy. They pose almost no risk to the Genin's life, and usually consist of old jobs like farming and babysitting work. Kakashi closed the distance and got closer, likely wanting to hear what Minato had to say. C rank missions are assigned to more experienced Genin and new Chunin. They are missions with little to no chance of combat against other ninjas such as guarding people against bandits or highwaymen, background investigations, eliminating or capturing bandits or thieves. If we continue in that order, we might be doing some bandit extermination. b rank missions are assigned to experienced Chunin, and sometimes Genin with a Jonin Sensei. They are missions that are likely to involve combat with another ninja, such as guarding important people, espionage, or hunting an enemy ninja. I ran my fingers through my hair at the mention of combat. I had wanted some experience before the war, where I would have to learn from my mistakes on a battlefield. We were back in Kanoha, the team split up at the gate and headed our separate ways. We had the rest of the week off. I had to go see if I got a position in the hospital. I sadly didn't I don't know why they didn't accept my application. I clearly showed I was adept in medical jutsu during graduation, so it should be in whatever file they had on me. I wondered if some of the Hayago elders were running interference. If so, that would be annoying. I don't have a way to figure out why I'm not being accepted. Sigh the only thing I could do now was send another application. I made another application to work in the hospital and went on my way. 
I figured it'd go see my mother, as I hadn't seen her in a while. My relationship with my mother had gotten better. Though there wasn't any love between us, we could now hold conversations. We sometimes recommended books to each other and caught up over tea. We were sitting at our chabudai and drinking tea. My mother was fond of Jun nature, and I didn't have a preference, so I just had what she was having. I told her about my team. I told her about my first week of D ranks, and how I cheated with shadow clones. I saw a slight smile on her lips. I told her about my first mission, and that I got to spend some time bonding with my sensei. She nodded and motioned me to continue. I told her that I got in a small fight with Kakashi, and then went on another mission, and that this one was as boring as the other one. She made eye contact from the table. Enjoy the boring missions while you can. You and Kakashi are extremely skilled for your ages. It won't be long before your team gets sent on harder missions. I nodded and continued telling her about my trouble getting a position at the hospital. I asked her if she could figure out why my applications were denied. She nodded. Yes, I have a former teammate who works in the hospital. I'll ask her to look into it. I thanked her nodded and bid her farewell. I had gone to visit Guy, now that I didn't see him every day at school. I found myself missing his youthful enthusiasm. Said youthful enthusiasm led to us climbing up the cliff that holds the Hokage Monument with only one hand. Guy was making his way up the cliff with speed and enthusiasm. I was following behind him in case he fell. Guy seemed to be enjoying himself as he was shouting youthfully proclaiming that he would do 1000 push-ups when he reached the top. I was not enjoying myself. My palm was getting sweaty and causing me to almost lose my grip a couple of times while climbing. I decided that this would be the last time I climbed the monument without chakra. We eventually reached the top we both were sweaty messes. Though Guy was still brimming with youth. Guy stood in his nice guy pose. Shiro, we must not rest, we must continue to fan our flames of youth. I got into my nice guy pose. How youthful, we shall fan our flames of youth brighter. So the whole village may witness our youth. That's the spirit Shiro. Guy then dropped to the ground and started doing push-ups. I cracked my knuckles and joined him. I spent the rest of the week practicing all for one, and sending clones out to the Hayuga library, to look for anything useful. The clones had little luck, though I had a lot of fun smashing trees and shattering earth. Soon the week was over, and I felt that I hadn't accomplished anything of note, and was feeling disappointed. I made my way to training ground 7, grabbing some yakisoba on my way. I arrived 30 minutes early as per usual. Kakashi was sitting in a tree, legs dangling and looking bored. I walked over and offered him some yakisoba. Kakashi ignored me as per usual. Social niceties over with I proceeded to the other side of the training ground, where I would finish my breakfast and start some early morning training. I was done my stretches and was doing my third set of pull-ups when Minato arrived. How was the hospital, Shiro? There was no hospital. My application was denied, Sensei. I decided to finish my last set of pull-ups while we talked what? Did they say why? No. Should they have said something? Yes. They test you on your knowledge and jutsu use, and send you out with a list of what you should work on. If you're not suitable for a position, I wasn't even tested. I was never tested. I was just told that my application was denied by one of the secretaries. I finished my set and dropped to the ground. Hum, that's not how they are supposed to do it. The fact that there was no test is suspicious. I agree, and I have the perfect group to blame Sai. So I'm going to look into it Shiro. That's alright Sensei. If they won't have me that's fine. I can find other ways to practice my jutsu. Minato just hummed but didn't agree or disagree. I surprised Minato using a kunai throne with the shunshin. It did not affect him, but it earned some praise. We finished a spa, and Minato told us to meet at the same time tomorrow. We went our separate ways, and that was that. We met up again at the same time, Kakashi and I arriving first and Minato coming a bit later. It was decided we would do another short mission today and see how things go from there. Minato would get the mission scroll while I and Kakashi got packed, and we would meet at the base of the tower when we were ready. Minato came back scroll in hand. I had arrived first as I had a bunch of pre-packed bags ready to go. I just had to swing by and grab them. Minato tossed me the scroll and sunshine away. Um, okay, then did he want me to read it? If he didn't want me reading it, he would have said something I unfold the scroll and got to reading. Sai, I tossed the scroll to Kakashi who had just arrived. Our mission seemed to be banned at elimination. Not something I wanted to do. Minato arrived minutes later and brought lunch with him. I thought he was angry about getting the mission or something, and tossed it to me so he could leave, and cool down turns out thinking about killing bandits. Makes him hungry Sai what a world. We sat on the roof of a building near the west gate and had lunch. My teriyaki was soured by the knowledge that I would probably have to kill some people soon. We then went on our way, Minato waved at the guards as we passed. The bandits were a team of six men at academy graduate level. The scroll said that they had been hopping the border between the land of grass and the land of fire, raping and pillaging, doing what immoral people with a little power do. Currently, they were in our territory so it was a problem. 
Our trip was slated to take a full day, so we would arrive at night set up camp and start our hunt for the bandits. I was plagued with thoughts. I wasn't upset that I would have to take lives. I've known that since I first decided to be a ninja. It was no surprise. I was unsure of what I would feel when I took a life. Would I like it? Would I hate it? Would it even faze me? I didn't know and that bothered me. We arrived near the three-way border between the lands of rain, grass and fire. We set up camp. Sadly this camp had no fire. Nor were we allowed to set up tents. I had a crappy sleep. I got up and started doing my stretches. Minato and Kakashi got up earlier than me. Minato was off doing something and Kikashi was eating an unappetizing looking ration bar. I finished my stretches and also ate a ration bar. Minato conveniently arrived when I was chewing on my last bit of ration bar. Okay, I found our bandits. I met and made a get on with it gesture. They set up a temporary camp and look like they're going to move it soon. So, should get them now. Kakashi chimed in. Minato nodded and gestured for us to follow as he walked away. Alrighty, time to pop my murder cherry. I sat in a tree staring at the bandit camp with my Bayakigan. There were six bandits. Three were sitting around a fire cooking some meat on sticks, two were keeping watch, and the last with the most chakra was sleeping off some wounds in his tent. Wounded enemies are the best enemies. In a low voice I relayed what I saw to the rest of the team, who were also sitting in the same tree. I watched one of the bandits around the fire drop the meat he was cooking, but pick it up and eat it anyway I made a disgusted face. What a filthy animal. What did you see Shiro? Nothing sensei. Minato had a grim face. I think there's a misunderstanding here I was made to scout some more. While Minato and Kakashi came up with a plan, it was decided that Minato and I would run at them from the front, and Kakashi would sneak up and throw a kunai with an explosive tag on it at the leader's tent. And then we would go from there. Any plans with explosions are bound to be good plans. I gave Kakashi who came up with the idea a thumbs up. Minato and I were sitting in a tree above one of the scouts. Kakashi was on the other side of the camp doing the same. We were waiting for the signal. Boom. That was hopefully the sound of their strongest perishing in an explosion. The scout below us looked towards the camp. I activated Chikaku no Kaoka and slowed my perception as much as possible. And I jumped off the tree and directed my fall towards the distracted scout. I pulled my right leg back and activated all for one. I continued to fall. And fall and fall I slowed my perception way too much eventually I was within kicking distance. And I brought my foot down onto the back of his head, and his head exploded, though thankfully mostly away from me. I landed then less in Shikaku no Kaoka, closed my eyes, and took a deep breath in. And out when I opened my eyes, the world was still in slow motion, Minato was among the group sitting at the fire and Kikashi was still out of sight. I didn't feel any different after killing the scout. Though that might change when the battle dies down, I closed my eyes a second time, and I opened them again with my Byakugan active. Kikashi was up in a tree staring at his dead scout, Minato was surrounded by dead bodies, and the leader's burnt corpse was covered in the wreckage of the tent. A very successful ambush. I completely stopped Shikaku no Kaioka and deactivated my Byakugan. I still wasn't sure how I felt we were seated at our camp, away from the smell of blood and burnt flesh. I felt dirty and wanted a shower. We sat in silence for another couple of minutes, until Minato gave the order to pack it up so we could leave. We all packed quickly and set off. I wanted a shower. Kakashi might have wanted to seek comfort in his father, and I couldn't guess Minato's thoughts. Though he probably wanted to get back to Konoha as well. We made it back a while after the sun had set. Kakashi tried to break from the team, but Minato stopped him. He told him that we had a two-week break, and told him that he could talk to him, if he ever needed anything. Kakashi nodded and left Minato, and I were watching Kakashi go. I turned to him and told him I was going home, and tried to make a break for it as well, hoping to get to my shower as fast as possible, and wash whatever dirtiness I was feeling away. Minato caught me and threw me over his shoulder. Sensei he hummed at me, can you let me go? I'm taking you to my place Shiro. I stared at him silently. Um, why is that? Kishina wants to see you. I don't think I have a choice in the matter I have to shower. I thought about kneeing him in the chest but realized that it wouldn't help me escape. That all right, I'll let you use mine. We arrived at Minato's apartment. Kishina met us at the door and pushed me into the bathroom, telling me I need to wash. I agree I do need to wash. And so, wash I did. I felt less dirty now that I had a shower, but still dirty. I got dressed, left the bathroom, and was immediately accosted. Kishina grabbed me and brought me to the living room and sat on the couch. Kishina sat me in in front of her and proceeded to play with my hair. I enjoyed the feeling of fingers running through my hair and fell asleep. 
I woke around midday feeling very hungry and with my hair in one big braid. No one was home so I gathered my things and sunshine home. Now home I took a second shower and got into a new jumpsuit. I went into my room and prepared to hibernate for a couple of days and not leave. I used my time in hibernation to think about my feelings. And still wasn't much closer to putting it into words. I didn't feel happy or upset at the bandits' deaths I felt nothing. Indifferent maybe. Apathy is what they call it. I felt apathetic towards the bandits and their deaths. I don't know what I should have felt. But surely it shouldn't be apathy. Two days had passed and I came out of my room. I was upset by my lack of care for the bandits. But that showed that I at least felt something. I figured that hiding in my house wouldn't solve anything and prepared to get back into the swing of things. I was in the third training ground fighting two of my clones. And when I say fighting... I mean avoiding all for one punches. After being beaten by my clones, I dispelled them and created one more to take their place. I sent this one to Gale's house, and that's where he would stay, while I trained with the second level of the gravity seal. I realized that I didn't like having the seal active all the time. It made me feel vulnerable. So, I decided that the seal would only be used for training. I was halfway home when my clone dispersed. Guy and my clone had done some of Guy's academy work before the clone left to bother Kakashi. And by bother... I mean the clone went to check OK Kakashi. Kakashi didn't like being checked on so, he sucker punched my clone. Will he be more insulted that I didn't come myself? I was finally home. I had just entered my home and was met with my mother. Hello, mother. I sent her a nod with my greeting hello and happy birthday Shiro Watt. Thanks mother. I forgot about my birthday. Here is your present from me. I was handed a box. Thanks. I tried to add some enthusiasm to my voice. I opened the box and was met with an old and thin book. So, what's this? I flipped through the pages to get a vague idea of what it was. The book contains details on biokig and techniques used by your great-great-grandfather. I got the gist of it the same moment she said it. Hum, what's in it? I raised an eyebrow at her. She raised hers back. You can read it and find out. Sigh thanks, I'm going to bed, I'll see you tomorrow. I heard a sigh behind me. Happy birthday Shiro, and good night. Six eh? Time flies after a shower. I was sitting in my room reading the book I just got. The book again went over the common uses and weaknesses of the Byakugan. Nothing new. The book went over the Byakugan telescopic vision and ability to see through solid objects. The book went on about the ability to magnify and zoom. Finally, some gold. Though it only mentioned seeing tiny insects so... I'm not going to be able to see cells the Byakugan also has the ability to detect things through their body heat. So, infrared vision. The book finally goes on about the Byakugan's usefulness in speed reading, and being used to read books from a distance. Copying books with the Byakugan sounds good. Too bad I didn't know about this when I was in Yugika. There were probably some useful books I could have nabbed so, some new stuff that I should have known. But didn't so now I have to train my Byakugan more, so I can nab books and scrolls in the future. Am I ever going to have the time to learn any lightning jutsu? I was in the public library under a henge testing out my Byakugan speed slash distance reading. I was seated in the Genin section of the library and trying to read stuff in the Chunin section. And I was met with great success. It was extremely easy. If I combined this with Kokoro no Kaoka I'd be a book stealing machine. I was distracted by an errant thought in Kanoha. They have barriers to keep the Byakugan from seeing inside some buildings. But once I'm inside can I use my Byakugan to read from whatever books and scrolls that are in the building? That would be a dumb flaw. But it would also be understandable if that was the case. Why would one go through extra measures to blind a friendly clan inside a building? That is already protected against casual snooping. Perhaps I can get a look at the scroll of seals. Something to try out in any case. I was in the third training ground, and two of my clones were spending time with people so I didn't have to. It was a week into my two-week break. I had gotten a hang of the three new Byakugan techniques I got for my birthday, and made enough progress for them to be usable. The infrared vision which was now called Predator Vision allowed one to see infrared radiation, which basically means I can now see heat. Cool stuff. Although I have no use for it now it's always good to have more tricks up my sleeves. I also got the Byakugan to zoom into and focus on a small bug within my range. I couldn't zoom into something outside of my range so... It wasn't what I thought it would be, but it was a neat trick nonetheless. This technique was appropriately called magnify. Again, this wasn't immediately useful, but I might run into a situation that I need to magnify something well probably not. But it's always good to know things. Continuing on I saved the best for last my favorite and definitely the technique I was the most excited about my speed slash distance reading technique. Now called Thief. I would have named it something different, but it'd mainly be using it to steal things. So thief it was I finished my training for the day, and dispelled my clones. Clone 1 had gone to feed and water guy, and make sure he was alive and well. Clone 1 did its job well, 
and rewarded itself with some flowers from the Yamanaka clan. I only wish that the clone hadn't bought 20,000 dash yen worth of flowers Sai. This is what happens when I let the clonus run around unlinked. I sent clone 2 over to Minato's apartment, so he could have his hair braided and nails painted, and my real body could be unaffected. Although my real body was unaffected, I still experienced the mental pain of social interaction with Kushina. Though some news did come from my visit. It seems Minato looked into the matter at the hospital and had some news for me. Sadly, the news required that I meet with the Hokage. And that was something I didn't want to do. As much as I didn't want to talk to the Hokage, I wanted to get into the hospital. And I wanted to see if I could get a peek around the Hokage Tower with my Byakugan. Maybe I'd get lucky and have a peek at the scroll of seals who knew. I woke up early and did my daily training. Meeting the Hokage is no excuse to miss my youthful training. Minato and I met at the base of the Hokage Tower. We said our greetings and made our way past the receptionist and up to the Hokage's office. The door was closed, Minato knocked and the door opened. A Jonin and his Jenin left and made their way past us. The Hokage waved Minato and me in. I stood in the middle of the circular room while Minato leaned against the wall. The Hokage took a hit from his pipe. He turned his head and blew the smoke to the left towards an open window. Minato tells me you have been having trouble with the hospital. That's not how I would say it. But yes, I'd use much harsher words than that Hokage-sama. Those bastards didn't even give me a chance. Sigh, there are problems with you going to the hospital. That didn't sound like good news. The village elders are against you pursuing medical ninjutsu. Definitely not good news then. You have prodigious talent in tojutsu. The elders don't want you to waste time pursuing medical jutsu, as you already have an extraordinary healing factor. I understood where they were coming from. But it also seemed like shallow reasoning at best. I'd say I'm equally talented in medical ninjutsu. My statement was met with silence. The office was quiet for a while. I was running over my words in my head, trying to see if I made some sort of blunder when the Hokage finally spoke. Even if you made an impressive show of medical jutsu and got into the hospital, it probably wouldn't end well. I was a bit confused, was that a threat? The reason you have not been branded with the caged bird seal is because of your future fighting potential. I blinked at that. It wasn't what I was expecting. The Hyuga won't brand me because of my possible future strength. The Hokage nodded. They don't want a powerful enemy inside their clan. Why haven't I been assassinated yet? What's stopping them from disposing of me? I made finger quotes at the words disposing of. There's a lot of political pressure to keep you alive because of your Kayuga bloodline. He paused, took another hit from his pipe and continued. With the Senju clan's extinction being a sure thing, the elders want a new bloodline to take their place. Sigh. I sighed heavily. I had no idea any of this was happening. I had thought being an elder's grandson had kept me safe. If you go to the hospital and become a med nin, the Hyuga could possibly take that as you being weak and lacking strength. The Hokage turned his pipe upside down and taped the ash into an ashtray. And the village elders don't want the Hyuga to have a bloodline under their control. So they have been blocking your attempts to gain an apprenticeship in the hospital. I wasn't sure I believed the whole Mednin being weak thing. Why would anyone think of Mednin as weak? The Hokage exhaled heavily. People who fail to adapt to ninja life often become Mednin. So, they are looked down on. So, they are looked at as failures. Ouch. So, I can't learn medical ninjutsu. The Hokage blew a heavy breath out of the nose and rubbed his head. It's not that you can't learn medical jutsu, you just can't become a medical ninja. Meaning, meaning that I wanted to give you my students notes to make up for your lack of a teacher. I fought to keep the smile off my face. Oh, thank you Hokage-sama. I began to do another deep bow. When my head almost reached waist level, I activated Chikaku no Kaoka and slowed my perception as much as I could. I activated my Byakugan a second after. I focused my attention on the Fuinjutsu barrier surrounding the office, blocking my sight from expanding. Alright, that was expected, no big deal. I looked around the room taking note of both the Root Ninja and Anbu hidden around the Hokage's office. One, in particular, was staring hard at me. I took note of how much Chakra the Hokage had but lost interest soon after. I focused on a bookshelf the Hokage kept in his office. It had nothing of worth. It was just a display of random civilian books. If I could have sighed, I would have, but my brain and eyes were moving faster then my body could. So, no annoyed sigh for me. I deactivated both of my techniques and kept my bow for a few more seconds before rising. The notes will be delivered to your home within the day, you're dismissed. I gave another bow and turned to leave. I made eye contact with Minato and got a smile from him. He made no move to leave, so I guess he's staying. Alrighty let's get out of here. I left the room and made my way down the hall. I activated Chikaku no Kooka only slightly slowing my perception. I rubbed my eyes with my palms to hide my Byakugan's activation. I took another look through the Hokage Tower. Nothing I can see that's helpful. Only some more seal protected rooms. 
Damn, I again deactivated my techniques. Disappointing but not unexpected. I made my exit. The notes arrived. I gave the Ambu that delivered it a nod of acknowledgement and brought the box of notes to my room in preparation for a long reading session within my bed. I was using Kokoro no Kaoka to burn as much of Tuznade's notes as I could into my brain. When I reached my limit, I would sleep for an hour and start again when I woke up. It wasn't fun, but it's what needed to be done. Tsunade's notes didn't provide many new jutsu, just the chakra transfer technique and some vague notes on scrambling the electric signals that the brain sends to the body using lightning chakra. On the other hand, it had lots of hard-learned experience written in it, and plenty of changes to the already existing medical ninjutsu. Not immediately helpful. What I need is experience, and burning notes into my brain won't give me that. The rest of the week passed, and soon it was time for Team Minato to meet up once again. Kakashi looked better than when I last saw him. Minato looked alright as well, he had his usual charismatic smile. Alright team, we have a choice between an escort mission or a tracking mission. Neither. Sensei can we do another bandit elimination mission? Kakashi and Minato were staring at me. I need to practice my medical ninjutsu. Discussion ensued and it was declared that I would not be allowed to practice on bandits. Minato recommended that I set up in any towns that we visit and provide free service and get my practice that way. That was completely fine with me. It was a better idea morally and practically. After all, why should I have to go to my test subjects when they can come to me instead? With the hospital no longer an option for me, it was decided that we would be doing five missions a month. I wasn't thrilled at the idea of more work than necessary, but Kakashi looked happy, so I let it be. It helped that I had more opportunities to practice my jutsu. Four months passed, and things had been going well. I had hit a small snag in the beginning, but other than that nothing noteworthy had happened. People didn't want to be treated by a six-year-old. So I didn't get many test subjects until the next mission we went on where I hinged into my most used disguise of my old teacher. Then business was booming, and by business, I mean the test subjects were presenting themselves to me in droves. I had gotten some experience with my new and improved medical ninjutsu, and was ready to start experimenting. I wanted to see if I could simulate a workout and strengthen the muscles without exercise. So, I had asked Renato for another bandit elimination mission. Predictably it didn't go well, though I won our argument in the end. I told Minato that if I didn't have bandits to test some ideas on that it'd have to use myself. That made Minato come around turns out holding your health and safety hostage is a good way to win an argument. Kakashi and I were leaning against a wall at the Hokage Tower waiting for Minato to get a mission scroll. I had been talking about my difficulties with my nature transformation and trying to get Kakashi to participate in the conversation. I of course had no luck and was just talking to myself. Eventually, Minato arrived scroll in hand. Nice, I was just running out of things to talk about. Okay, at Shiro's request we're doing a bandit elimination mission. I gave a nice guy pose. Though this mission is B-ranked and will be a little different than the last bandit elimination mission we went on. E-ranked missions meant ninja on ninja combat. Something I was excited about. I could only get so far when my opponents didn't have the chance to fight back. Minato Sensei do we get to fight the ninja? I gave my best impression of puppy eyes. One of you will, there's only one ninja. I turned to Kakashi. Rock, paper, scissors. Something I introduced to solve arguments between me and Kakashi. Something I could also easily win with Chikaki no Kaioka. Something I let Kakashi win often to give him some false confidence. Kakashi nodded. Alright, let's go. I activated Chikaki no Kaioka. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I watched Kakashi's hand shift into scissors. I shifted my own into rock. I deactivated Chikaku no Kaioka. I wing Kakashi looked disappointed. Well, I'd like to think he looked disappointed as most of his face was covered I couldn't tell. The bandit elimination mission was much further away from Kanoha than our usual missions. The bandits were terrorizing merchants traveling from the land of tea into the land of fire. For this trip we would pass Otofuki Gai and Kenshi and then make our way to the sea where we would follow the water until we get near T. From then we would go to the bandits' last known location and sniff them out. We were two days into our mission. I didn't realize that traveling from Kanoha to the land of T was a three-day trip. I was already done with this mission and we weren't even halfway through it. After we got there and did our thing, we would still have to travel back for three days. I got too excited and jumped on the opportunity to fight a ninja. If I had known I would have to spend almost a week of my life on this mission, I would have waited for another opportunity. We finally arrived. We were on a strip of land located between the Hangyuri Gulf and Kanashi Ocean. The Hangyuri Gulf being westward and the Kanashi Ocean being towards the southeast. And to our immediate south was the border between the land of tea and the land of fire. 
We had set up camp near a river. I was soaking in the river and enjoying the feeling of being semi-clean. Kakashi was setting up camp, and Minato was scouting. I got less work as the previous two nights I had set up camp. Minato returned with bad news. He didn't find the bandits today. So that meant that our trip would probably be delayed another day si a day later. Minato found the bandits. They were holed up in an underground base that had been made with Earth Release. We probably shouldn't be going underground with an Earth Release user. So, rushing into the base was out. We couldn't collapse the cave as I would lose my guanine pigs. I decided that I might be able to make a better plan when I see the structure of the base. Minato, Kakashi, and I were standing in the trees. We arrived at the base. Well, I couldn't see the base. But this is where Minato said it was Minato and Kakashi were going to wait until I got a good look at the base structure. Then we would form a plan. I activated my Bayakigan and began to scan the base. The entrance was on the side of a hill. The base sloped down and expanded further underground. Oh boy. This was more than I wanted to deal with. The bandit's base was big. I couldn't see the whole structure with my Bayakigan's current range. I silently jumped from tree to tree, trying to see the entire base. There was only one entrance but many shafts to let air in and out. I could see three ninjas. This made my winning of rock, paper, scissors pointless. I wanted to sigh but was wary of making too much noise. This was much more than I was mentally prepared to deal with. I got near Minato and Kakashi and made a motion for them to follow me and headed a bit away from the base. So, there are 15 normal bandits, 3 missing nin, 2 hygienin level and one Mitchunin level. Minato summed up what I told him. Yet, yeah. Kakashi chimed in, what village are they from? Missed. That meant that one should watch for water release in Kinjutsu. Can you use fire release sensei? Minato nodded at me. How about we smoke them out? The plan made the three of us silently crept to the entrance. Minato, Kakashi, I and three of my clones were at the entrance. After knocking out the guard and another bandit that was close to the entrance, we piled as many leaves as we could silently get at the entrance. Minato gave the signal to start. Kakashi got into a stance short sword at the ready, and I activated my Bayakigan. Minato ran through a few hand seals, took a deep breath, and blew a stream of flames onto the pile of leaves. His part done, he stepped back and allowed me and my clones to take over. Me and the clones alternated and sent vacuum palms at the pile of burning debris. It pushed the debris into the cave, but the smoke wasn't filling the cave like I had wanted it to. Minato ran through more hand seals, clapped his hands, and released a stream of wind towards the entrance. Wind release. Gale palm. Sensei to the rescue. Minato continued to hold the technique. I sent one clone to watch over the part of the base I couldn't see, so it could dispel if they tried to escape. The other two clones were sent into the base. Hopefully, they could take care of some of the cannon fodder before they get in the way. Everything was quiet. We were still at the entrance waiting for something to happen. Finally, two of my clones were dispelled. They had made their way through the cannon fodder knocking them out as they passed. The clones met up with the two genin level ninja and engaged in some good old tajutsu combat. The clones were easily winning and were enjoying the fight. The third Miss Ninja sped in and dispelled the two clones, when they were distracted with the other ninja. Stupid clones. All they had to do was pay attention and not get distracted Kwan. They even had their Bayakigan active, my clones knocked all the normal bandits unconscious. Though I'm not sure I need 15 bandits, I might have to get rid of most of them things were still quiet at the entrance. My other clone hadn't dispelled, and the ninja hadn't come within my range finally. Some movement, the three ninjas made their way towards the entrance. Sensei the ninjas are approaching. I had figured they would stop near the entrance and check things out. But instead, they ran out not stopping and engaged with Kakashi and Minato. I of course got my own ninja. We met in a clash of blades my kunai against his sword. A Hayuga eh? He had both hands on his sword, which was a mistake yep. I popped the pee. I used my left hand's index and middle fingers to poke him in the eyes. Ugh. He jumped back. I activated Chikaku no Kaioka, and my world slowed down. He took another jump back trying to put more distance between us. I just used Shunshin on my right arm and tossed my kunai at him. It sailed through the air and embedded itself in his stomach he screamed. Ouch my ninja started trying to run away. Kunai still in his stomach. Sorry my friend, but I don't feel like a chase today. I grabbed another kunai and used Shunshin to throw it. It sailed through the air and got embedded in his back he started screaming, then stumbled and fell. If I lessened Shikaki no Kaoka, and my world was only slightly slowed. Sorry about that, my aim's not that good. He didn't respond, he just kept screaming. I shunshined to him and tapped him on the back of the head with a gentle fist strike. The screaming stopped. I let my eyes wander his brain dead form for a moment. That was extremely unpleasant and pointless. There was no combat to be had. I focused my attention on Minato and Kakashi. They were both doing fine. 
but had not killed their opponents. I waved at Minato. He raised an eyebrow at me. I mimed tossing something and pointed to his opponent and then pointed to myself. Minato nodded. Minato appeared behind his opponent faster. Then I could see and grabbed him by the back of his clothing and threw him to me. Minato turned to watch Kakashi's fight leaving the tune into me. I shunshined to my new opponent who was still mid-air and cut the tendons in his legs with my chakra scalpels. He tumbled for a second and tried to roll into a standing position but fell on his face. I shunshined to him again and knocked him unconscious with a quick application of the anesthetic jutsu. Perhaps I should have actually fought him. So much for combat experience. I looked at Kakashi's fight again before I deactivated my Byakugan. My most important test subject secured I created another clone and sent it off to secure three more test subjects and to dispose of the rest. I dispersed the clone watching the rest of the cave as well and enjoyed the feeling of a good amount of my chakra returning. That might have been the lowest my chakra has ever been. It seems I'm not good at rationing my chakra. My four test subjects were gathered, and each had the anesthetic jutsu used on them, so they would remain unconscious while I looked at their bodies. Boom. Kakashi had used an explosive note on his opponent and finished his fight with a bang. I gave Kakashi a thumbs up when he approached and then focused back onto my task. I had a few things I wanted to know. Could I simulate a workout and strengthen muscles without exercise? Could I transplant organs to other people who have lost theirs without rejection? Could I transplant someone's flesh onto someone else? And can said flesh continue producing physical energy? The last one was the one I was the most excited about. I had thought of this when I remembered that Madara and Abito had some of Harashima's cells grafted onto themselves. And that granted them would release. I wondered if I could do the same with one of the Otsutsuki on the moon. Maybe that's my path to the Tensigan. The same way Madara got the Rinnegan though I wondered if I needed to be a reincarnation of Hamura's son slash sons to awaken the Tensigan. I still had the problem of even getting to the moon. But perhaps I would find a solution in time I was seated beside my first test subject. Minato and Kakashi were watching from a tree a few meters away. I figured out that I could strengthen the muscles. One grotesquely muscular arm on my first test subject was proof of such. But it was not something I would want done to myself when I strengthen the muscles artificially the cells divide extremely fast, which also shortens their lifespan. Not something I wanted, and not something that happens during the normal strengthening of the muscles. Normally stem cells change to muscle cells, and fuse to the damaged or strained area, and increase muscle mass. So, I just had to use stem cells. But where do I take them from? There were so many the bone marrow, blood vessels, skeletal muscle, skin, and teeth were just some of the locations you could find adult stem cells. I was spoiled for choice. I got up and walked over to the other arm of my first test subject and sat down again. This time I'd try again but with stem cells. The stem cell muscle strengthening worked as intended, but not as fast as the cell division version did. I for one didn't have an unlimited store of stem cells to pull from. And I couldn't use all of the stem cells present in one given area, as they were still needed for other operations in the area. I'd still call this a success. Even though I won't have instant muscles I could use this to grow and maintain my muscles without extreme exercise. I was hit by a thought. Was this why Tuznate was so strong? She presumably gambled and drank and didn't train in the years she took off. So maybe this was her trick. Maybe this was the reason for her freakish strength. The scene of Tsunade stopping the sword of Jiraiya's summon passed through my mind. I declared my first and easiest experiment a success. I directed a look at my first subject. He had two freakish looking arms and legs. But those organs were still good. I looked at the bandits and realized it made a mistake I forgot about possible organ rejection. There are so many issues with transplants, if they don't have the same blood type. Rejection. If the tissue is different. Rejection. Chakra is incompatible. Rejection. I should have perhaps checked to see if they were compatible before I grabbed them. Though with chakra involved perhaps family members are the only ones who can have organs transplanted. Any family members among the bandits. I looked towards the cave only to see it was collapsed really. Why is the cave collapsed? It was Kakashi who answered. I kicked the missing nin into the cave before he exploded. So he stuck an explosive note on him and kicked him away. That sounds pretty cool. Too bad I didn't see it. On the issue of incomparability why weren't Harashima's cells rejected by Madara's body? Perhaps the DNA. DNA of Otsutsuki descendants mesh as well. Sigh, I was feeling rather upset. This trip was looking to be a bit of a bust. I couldn't test half the things I had wanted to. Swapping bandit organs seemed like pointless cruelty. I looked at the sky. I had a few hours of daylight left. What else could I do that would not make this a waste? Ah, I could look into the nerves a bit. 
I had wanted to find a way to improve reaction time and dull my own nerves if I had ever gotten injured and needed to ignore the pain. Course of action decided I looked back at my test subjects sorry friends. I need your bodies for personal improvement. My day with the bandits turned test subjects ended with little success. I couldn't figure out a way to enhance the nerves. Though I did find a way to dull or deaden the sensations the sensory nerves received. That done I looked back to my first test subject. Hum. I blew a breath out of my nose going. With the theme I named my new muscle strengthening technique. Kinyoku Kaioka, meaning muscular enhancement. I was still a bit of a weeb, even death couldn't stop my descent into weebhood. I woke the bandit I used the Kinyoku Kaioka on, and had him punch a tree. I had wanted to see how well the muscle enhancement worked before I offed him, but his arm crumpled, and he started screaming. Oops I guess the bones need to be able to handle the new strength of the muscles. It wasn't something I had thought about earlier, but something my test subject made apparent. I knock the bandit out and place him on the ground. Although my bones are plenty sturdy, if I want to do this on someone else I'll have to learn to strengthen the bones. A stamina enhancement needed to be considered as well though it could be put off for a while. It seems my day is not over yet I began my new final experiment of the day. Endochondral ossification is the process in which most of the body's bones are made. It was basically bone cells forming the shape of the bones, and then being calcified by other bone cells that deposit calcium to the area. So, I needed to speed this process up, and use it to thicken the bones. How could I do it? Oh, I got it. Hello there Mr. Stem Cell, I need your help again with my final experiment of the day done. I killed the bandits with a gentle fist strike to the heart, and started on my way to the camp. I heard Minato and Kakashi following from the trees. Sigh, I wish I had planned better. I could have gotten more done. Then I did, I probably won't get to do this off an eye after all. Don't want any Orochimaru comparisons, well. I guess it's good to learn from your mistakes. We had arrived at the camp and had gathered at the fire. We were sitting in silence until Minato spoke. Shiro, hum, did you accomplish what you wanted to? No. Minato raised an eyebrow. It looked successful. Time to lie. Strengthening the muscles like that shortens your life significantly. I paused and took a breath. And you have to strengthen the bones as well, which further shortens your lifespan. I didn't want to be doing this all day to other ninjas after all. So not very successful. Kinder, it's considered successful if the person strengthened also doesn't plan on living for long. Minato met and dropped the topic. Morning came, we packed up our supplies and set off on our trip. The trip going back was the same as the trip there, that being painful and long. We passed a merchant. He smiled and waved at us. I gave him the finger and continued on. Keep that cheerfulness and goodwill to yourself. Finally, we arrived back at Kanoha. We checked in with the gate guards and got through the gate fine. Minato said we had a week-long break and that he'd expected the mission report to be handed in tomorrow with my experiment included within. That was annoying but fine. I was done with being dirty. So I rushed home as fast as possible, completely ignoring the rest of the team. I had a date with my shower. I said hello to my mother and rushed past her not waiting for a response. Here, I come shower Sama. I heard my mother sigh behind me, but ignored her in favor of my long desired shower. With my shower done, I laid down on my bed and thought about Kinyoku Kaioka. I wanted to improve my muscles and free up training time for some other activities. The problem which wasn't really a problem was food consumption. My appetite would be massively increased. My bones wouldn't be a problem. They seemed to get stronger the more chakra I had. I'd also have to tone down my shows of strength, so Minato doesn't catch on to the fact I suddenly got stronger. Or maybe I just need to have my gravity seal active all the time. That might be the way to go. I decided that I'd think about it tomorrow. I rolled around in my blankets and turned myself into a human burrito and fell asleep soon after. Morning came and I forced myself out of bed. I did my morning routine, got dressed and promptly jumped back into bed. Time to put Kanyoku Kaoka to use. I finished up Kinyoku Kaioka and headed to the kitchen for a snack. I was feeling hungry. Food alone probably wouldn't make up for using Kinyoku Kaioka. I might have to look into vitamin and mineral supplements. Hopefully, they exist in this world. I was in the third training ground experimenting with my strength. It had improved, though not by a huge amount. It was still almost a week's worth of normal training. Though I probably couldn't use Kinyoku Kaioka more than three times a week it was good enough. Now, I had more time to pursue other disciplines. I could finally get going on my nature transformation. Ninja wizardry here I come. I was headed to guys. I wanted to ask about supplements and figured that guy and Dai would be the people that would know about them. That and I wanted to see how they were doing turns out there were supplements, though they were created by Dai. They were little brown bowls that were made from rice, various flowers, dried vegetables and fruits, seeds, and various other ingredients. Dai gave me a few as well as the recipe. I popped one into my mouth. Yuck. They tasted like mud. Maybe this is the secret to Guy and Dai's youthful energy. 
I thanked Dai for his generosity and headed on my way. I had to visit Kishina before she came to visit me. I wasn't interested in having my home invaded when I didn't expect it. I arrived at the door to Minato's apartment and knocked. Knock. 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 I waited and received no answer. I looked up at the sun and realized it was about dinner time time to go check the Raymond stand. I arrived at Ichiraku Raymond and saw Kishina almost immediately. She was sitting next to a tower of Raymond bowls. I approached and gave a cheerful greeting. Hello, Kishina. Nothing happened for a moment. I figured I was ignored and was about to say hello again. When Kishina's hand shot out and grabbed me, I was promptly smothered by Kishina's one hand, while she continued to eat her Raymond with the other. I struggled to free myself for a moment, but eventually surrendered to my fate. Eventually, Kishina was sated and returned my hello. Hello Shiro, I missed you. I just nodded. I had already accepted my fate, and was hoping I could get some free food out of this. My body was promptly turned to face a black-haired young woman. Shiro, this is my friend Mikoto. Say hi. All right then hi. I gave a small wave to complete the greeting. Kishina was right you are cute. Spread the word of my cuteness. Feel his hair, it's so soft. Ah, uh, oh. Mikoto ran a hand through my hair. Yes, it is. Can I braid it? What? Why? Yes, you can. Shiro doesn't mind. She smiled at me. Right, Shiro. Left. Go ahead, Mikoto-sama. Was what left my mouth instead. I should have sent a clone eventually. Mikoto and Kishina headed home, leavening me at the Raymond stand. I never got my free food. I sighed and left in a hurry. I wanted to get home and wash away the feeling of human interaction anyway the next day I and three of my clones were henged and wandering around Kanova. I was wandering around the outside of the Nara compound by Akigan active looking for unprotected buildings. There were almost no buildings protected, only the clan head's house and the library being protected from Hyuga snooping Sai. There were still probably books and scrolls outside the library, inside some clan members' houses. But I didn't want to comb through all the houses for books that likely weren't useful. I was on my way to the Yamanaka compound when one of my clones dispelled he was enjoying his time snooping around the Achiha and decided that he needed a closer look at the inside of the compound. It didn't end well, a guard called him out on being a clone and dispelled him with a punch. That was fine, the clone had similar results to me. Both the clan head's house and the library were blocked from sight so, no easy books for me more clones dispelled as I made my way around Kanoha. Most of the important buildings were protected from the Byakugan, so, no easy loot for me. The Akimichi are oddly the most protected in the village. I had a chuckle at the thought that the Akimichi were probably just protecting their recipes. I wondered why they might need that many anti hyuga barriers but decided to leave it. I had other things I wanted to do before my break was over anyway. No need to waste time. With five days left in my week-long break, I was once again in the third training ground. I was seated with my back to a tree, and running lighting chakra down both my arms at the same time. It was pretty painful. I stopped the flow of lightning chakra along my arms and took a break. After my arms healed my next order of business was to see if using lightning chakra outside of the body was more effective. I was healed up enough and ready to try again. I gathered chakra on my palms and started to convert it into lightning chakra. I looked at my hands. Blue lightning was jumping from finger to finger. It was much easier to create lightning chakra inside the body. But I can handle more of it outside the body. I stopped supplying chakra to my hand. Hum using your element on a weapon was considered one of the most basic uses of nature transformation so... Having it outside the body was easier. I think it's time to look into some actual lightning jutsu off to the library. I go. I was sat in the library under a henge and was reading some scrolls on lightning ninjutsu. It seems I have been making some blunders most of the techniques say that lightning chakra is made outside the body. Oops. I moved a few of the useless techniques to the side. I was against anything that required touch to activate. I wanted more ranged attacks. I was reading a scroll about a technique called lightning strike. The user creates an electric current that can hit multiple individuals at the same time. The lightning can extend incredible distances and can avoid obstacles. It only used three hand seals as well. What a lovely technique. Shame it wasn't named chain lightning. That would have been more fitting. I activated Kokoro no Kooko and burned it into memory. A grin split my face. I was close to using ninja magic. Just a little more turns out. It was still going to take a long time to learn ninja magic. I couldn't control the lightning when it left my body. If it was on my hand it was fine. But as soon as I went through the hand seals and tried to throw the lightning, it went towards the nearest metallic object. The first being my kunai pouch, and the second being my headband. Unlucky I started small sign and jutsu was a huge time sink, maybe I lack talent in it, or something I'll keep trying. Hopefully it gets easier. The more experience I get with it soon my week of freedom was over. And it was time to do more missions I was starting to despise missions. I enjoyed them at first, but lately, 
I've been hating them. Sai, I met Kakashi at training ground 7, 30 minutes early as per usual. Want to spar? Kakashi responded with a bland no alrighty. Obligatory offer made. I went over to the other side of the training ground, sat at the base of a tree, and began to practice my nature transformation. Soon Minato arrived and brought good news. Okay boys no missions this week, we are going to spar, and then you can go and do your own thing. Minato made the seal of confrontation, Kakashi, and I made the same signaling the start of the spar. I activated Chikaku no Kaoka, and the world around me slowed. I started this spar with Shunshin and a one for all enhanced kick to Minato's back. My kick met a log, said log exploded. Minato had used Kawarimi to swap with the log. Was that Sealus or did he do that before the match started? Sigh. These spars were never fun. I hated being outsmarted at every turn. I looked to where Kakashi was and saw him engaging with Minato. They met in repeated clashes of blades, kunai vs short sword. Let's try this again. I used Shunshin again and sent another one for all enhanced kick to Minato's back. I got kicked in the chin and sent flying. Ouch. I rolled to my feet and looked back at where Minato and Kakashi were. Minato and Kakashi seemed to be enjoying their fight. I'm feeling a little left out. I threw a kunai at Minato. And he backhanded it out of the air without even turning around. Sigh. I sighed again before activating my Byakugan and jumping into the fight. The spa ended with Kakashi and I laying on the ground soundly defeated, and Minato standing a distance away looking unruffled. Well done, you both improved a lot. Here comes the criticism. Shiro, you need more ranged attacks. You also need to take less damage. Even with your healing you shouldn't allow yourself to be hit. Fair enough. Kakashi, you also need some ranged attacks. And you need to work on your teamwork and ability to coordinate your attacks with Shiro. Kakashi generally got similar advice about teamwork every time we spared. It never seemed to stick and probably wouldn't change until everyone he knew and loved died. I can't wait until I can get off this team. Two more months passed. We had been out of the academy for around eight and a half months total. The war drew closer as did the Ninetales attack. I wasn't feeling as pressured as I once was. Surviving seemed doable and not too far out of my reach. Minato said I was at tune and level, and that I was only lacking experience and people skills. People skills didn't matter in your consideration for promotion, but it did help when you wanted to lead a team. My people skills being called into question came from a C-ranked escort mission that we did a week ago. We were escorting an affluent female noble to her family's house that she had planned to visit. She had decided that I was cute and was touching me and talking to me in baby speak and just generally invading my personal space. Oh, you're so cute. Yes, you are. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, I bet all the girls in Kanoa just adore you. They do, but I think it's about time you fuck off. Miss, she smiled at me. Yes, Shiro Kun. Time to use my secrete move. When's the baby due? She looked confused. What baby? Time for the conversation killer. Your baby. I tried my best to sound confused while I reached over and patted her stomach. E-A-T asterisk P-A-T asterisk P-A-T asterisk O-R. I'm not expecting finish her. Oh, um, I thought you were pregnant, sorry. I bowed my head. Oh, it's alright Shiro Kun I heard Kakashi stifle his laughter. The woman didn't speak for the rest of the trip. My secret technique did critical damage. The conversation killer has yet to fail me. And that was about the gist of the incident. I received no actual trouble from it. Though I did get a talking to from Minato telling me to improve my people skills. Other than that nothing noteworthy happened. We didn't go on any more B-ranked missions. I continued practicing my nature transformation. I used Kanyoku Kaoka a good amount. And now have my gravity seal active at level 2 all the time. Life was good. And I wasn't feeling the shadow of death hanging over me all the time. I had a lot of free time nowadays. Anything I needed to learn was burnt into my mind with Kokoro no Kaoka. And with Kinyoku Kaoka my training time was cut down a lot. This gave me more time to practice nature transformation. I was making progress. I had gotten the technique down to one hand seal and could now somewhat control the direction of the lightning and guide it around trees. But once it got past a certain strength, I could no longer control it. It wasn't a problem, strength would come with experience. I also wanted to drop that final hand seal. The last hand seal was used to control the lightning once it left my body. I had amazing chakra control, but it didn't extend past a foot around my body. So, what technique did people use that controlled stuff at a distance? Chakra strings. I hoped they were the answer to my current problem. So now I walked around the house and used chakra strings to pick up things and make my meals. At first my chakra strings were misshaped and clumsy. But the more I used them the better I got. When I figured out how to make my chakra strings invisible, I'd be walking around looking cool when my tea seemingly made itself. It would make quite an impression on future guests.
But until then I'd continue to walk around hand outstretched, misshapen strings coming from my fingers, and a look of concentration on my face. I was doing some youthful training with Gat when I had a sudden but terrible epiphany. I hadn't been doing much youthful training on my own. Could I even consider myself youthful? Do I even deserve to wear this jumpsuit? Guy. I'm not training youthfully anymore, Shiro, and I no longer try to get people to wear a youthful jumpsuit. I've started behaving unyouthfully, and I don't think I can change my ways. My eyes met guys. Shiro, I shall fan my flames of youth twice as hard for both of us. Tears started streaming down my face. Guy, you're the most youthful friend I could ask for. Guy had tears streaming down his face as well. Shiro, let's ignite your flames of youth by running 1000 laps around Kanoha on our hands. I gave my nice guy pose. That's a great idea Guy. Guy gave his nice guy pose. We had another B-ranked mission. This time it was an escort mission. We had to escort some rich heir to his mansion and make sure he doesn't die on the road. His mansion was located in the Keshi which was the capital of the Land of Fire. I was packed and at the south gate waiting for my teammates. Kakashi had yet to arrive, which was unusual as he usually arrived before I did. Eventually Minato and Kakashi came into view bringing with them a green head. Green-eyed teen. I placed the teen at 18-ish. Just at the cusp of adulthood. They got closer and I figured I'd not beat around the bush. So, who wants him dead? Minato sent me an admonishing look. Shiro, what? He knows someone wants him dead. His cousin wants to be the heir and hired some ninja from Tangika to kill him. The village hidden in the valleys. Never heard of them. Tangika. What are they known for? Kakashi chimed in. Being ninja. Very useful Kakashi. They known for anything else. Minato chimed in this time. About 18 years ago they destroyed Kijero village. Heat Haze village. More nobodies. And anything useful. As Kakashi said, they are known for being ninja. They don't have any clans or special bloodlines so. Cannon fodder ninja. I guess. I looked at our client. He had been silent and was watching us converse. So, got anything to say meatbag? The look of disbelief on our client's face was delicious. Shiro, I think this might be my new thing. Eventually, we set off. I figured that our client would ride in a cart or palanquin, as that's how most rich folks seem to travel. But I guess he was walking. Can our client not afford a cart? Shiro, we hadn't even gotten halfway through our trip, and I was bored. I had been activating my Byakugan every couple of minutes hoping to spot a possible ambush. Sadly, it was not my day. There was no ambush. I looked at a client who was walking between me and Minato. What was his name again? What's your name meatbag? He gave a soft effeminate reply. Ida Kichiru. I looked a little closer at Ida. Was he a trap? Or a woman dressed as a man? I had no idea. But I guess it also didn't matter we were about done the mission, we had about 4 hours until we reached the capital. Sensei, Minato turned his head to look at me. Yes, where's the action? Are we going to encounter any enemy ninja? Minato shook his head. Maybe not when we were about an hour away from the capital, we finally encountered the Tanganin. Minato seemed to have detected them a while ago, but it wasn't until now they entered my range. They were both hiding underground. Two Tangachun and 120 meters ahead. Kakashi and Minato both nodded. Our client looked frightened. Kakashi protect the client. Shiro you're with me. Minato veered off to the right and into the trees. And I followed behind. We were about 40 meters from the Tanga Nin when Minato stopped. Shiro. I raised an eyebrow at him. Hum. What's up? You should use this opportunity to fight and gain some experience fighting opponents around your level. I made a get on with its gesture. You should let your fight last longer than 10 seconds. Ah, gotcha. I gave Minato a thumbs up. Yes, Sensei. I do try to end fights as fast as possible. I don't want my enemies to have the time to outthink me after all. Alright, let's go. I activated Shikaku no Kooka at a low level. We continued our approach. Eventually, we were right on top of them. Too bad they didn't have a sensor with them. I deactivated my Byakugan. And I the ground they were hidden under. If I hadn't seen them with my Byakugan, I wouldn't have known they were there. Should I be learning skills like this? No, I'm not interested. I took a silent breath through my nose and stepped off my branch, charging a one for all enhanced kick. My heel hit the ground and the earth shattered. Boom. The two ninjas emerged from the ground looking shaken. Minato jumped in and kicked his opponent away. He followed his opponent off into the distance. I and my opponent spared the flying Tanga Nin a look. Ouch. The Tanga Nin nodded. Shall we start? The Tanga Nin didn't waste words and jumped towards me, kunai in hand. I met his kunai with one of my own. I snaked my left hand towards his face hoping to poke him in the eyes, but was blocked. I jumped back and he followed me. We engaged in a few more clashes of kunai. I tried to sweep his feet out from under him, 
but he jumped and threw a handful of kunai at me. I used Shunshin on my left arm and snatched the closest kunai. He took this time to put some distance between us. I used both my kunai and the one I caught to deflect the rest of the weapons. We stared at each other and my opponent started running through hand seals. Tiger, ox, snake. Oh, the hiding like a mole jutsu the second I had the thought he disappeared underground. Ha! Huh. Where did he go? I hope that was convincing enough. When using the hiding like a mole technique, the user can tell where their target is by sensing magnetic forces. I had no idea how that was done, but that's what the scroll had said. So, he would likely come to me. I stood still, a one for all enhanced kick at the ready. The second his hand started to exit the earth, I hit the ground with my heel. Boom. The ground cratered before giving way. My foot went through the earth like butter and hit his head. The hand spasmed before going limp. Oops, I pulled my leg and foot from the ground. I sighed, I deactivated Chikaki no Kaioka, and then activated my Bayakigan. I took a second to register that Minato had already subdued his opponent, and had been watching my fight. I ignored him and focused on my ex-opponent. The Tanganen's head had caved in. When one uses the hiding like a mole jutsu the earth around them changes into fine sand, allowing them to move sadly, it also allowed me to stomp him. Sensei. I accidentally killed him. I nudged a limp hand with my foot for emphasis. Sigh, I can see that Shiro. Minato threw his opponent over his shoulder and started on his way back towards Kakashi and our client. I focused back on my opponent. I decided that he was a good opponent. I bowed my head, clasped my hands and said a prayer. We may not know each other, but may you be blessed in your next life. After all, how many opponents bury themselves and save you the cleanup? I made my way back to Kakashi and Ida. Minato split off from me and told me to send Kakashi to him. I bet Minato was going to do an interrogation. I could see Kakashi and Ida in the distance. They both looked fine. It seems there was no trouble on Kakashi's end. I gave them a friendly wave as I approached. Kakashi, Minato-sensei wants you for an interrogation. I felt a bit disappointed that Kakashi would be learning integration before me but figured that it was fairer as I had gotten to fight the Tanganin. The look of terror on the client's face at the word interrogation was also welcome. I wasn't supposed to use the word interrogation around our client, but how else would I entertain myself? I watched Kakashi disappear into the forest. I wonder if we will hear the screams. The whimper the client let out was music to my ears. Sadly, no screams were heard. Minato and Kakashi returned. Minato had his usual smile, and Kakashi looked a bit ill. But other than that they both looked normal. Hum, I figured there would be more blood involved. Minato nodded at me and Ida. Alright, let's get you home Ida. Ida looked overjoyed at the thought. Anything to worry about Sensei? Meaning, what did the interrogation yield? No, nothing new. A little more combat wouldn't have hurt. We arrived at the capital's northern gate. We gave the guards our ninja licenses, and we were allowed to pass. Ida had some papers of his own that he showed as well. Sensei, can I go look around? No. Okay, we made our way down the streets following Ida. Eventually, we reached his mansion. The guards recognized him and let us pass. Ida signed our mission scroll and bolted into his mansion slamming the door behind him. Minato looked at me. Wasn't me. He continued looking at me. Minato rubbed his temple. Alright, let's get back to Kanoha. We would be back before nightfall. Nice. Shower, Sama, here I come. I was back in Kanoha and on a week-long break. Minato used the break to run missions by himself, while Kakashi and I pursued individual training. I planned on using my free week to add the lightning palm to my repertoire. I however finished ahead of schedule completing the lightning palm in one day. I had met all the requirements before I started learning it. All I needed to do was make it seal less or to get it down to one hand seal. And that could be done later. So, I need to find something to do for the rest of the week. Hum, I think he'll try for another lightning jutsu. Off to the library. I go I was in the library under a henge and sitting in the genin section. I was of course using my Bayakigan to read the books in the chunin section. I had a few choices in jutsu. Lightning release. Lightning ball. Lightning release. Wall. Lightning release. Lightning arrow. The lightning ball was out. It required that the user be able to manipulate the chakra away from the body. Lightning release. Wall was a multi-person jutsu and thus too draining to use, so it was also out. That left the simple lightning arrow. Sorry lightning ball and wall maybe next time. I focused on the lightning arrow scroll and memorized it with Kokoro no Kaioka. My work was done. I exited the library and made my way to my favorite training ground. I had a lot to do today after all. I sat down and started on the lightning arrow technique. The user molds then shapes lightning nature chakra. They can then throw the lightning as a projectile, or combine it with a water release technique to electrocute a target. This technique was a simple C-ranked jutsu, only requiring the ram hand seal. I set my hands into the shape of the ram hand seal, then gathered lightning chakra on my palm, shaping it as arrow-like as possible. I then launched the lightning arrow to the nearest tree. 
It hit the tree leaving a small scorch mark. Alrighty. That wasn't quite where I aimed, but that's fine, I'll get better. I spent the rest of the day shooting lightning arrows. I experimented with the size and number of the arrow. Eventually, I got low on chakra and had to call it a day. I arrived home around mid-evening. I was met with my mother who looked visibly nervous. She waved me into the dining where took a seat at a chavidai. She motioned for me to join her, and I did after a moment of hesitation. She stared into my eyes for a moment before she looked away, and seemed to get lost in thought. I kept my silence, only raising an eyebrow when she met my gaze after a few moments. Shiro I've been ordered to watch you by who and for what. Why have you been ordered to watch me? And who would order a mother to watch their son? That sounded a bit crazy. The Hokage was concerned about your mental stability when you experimented on some bandits. What did he not like? He let Stanzo abduct children into root and doesn't bat an eye? So, my mother drummed her fingers on the table for a moment before replying. The Hokage doesn't want you to experiment on people from the village. Not a problem. Don't eat where you shit and all that. That's not a problem. I wouldn't experiment on anyone that was not already meant to die. Which was true, if you accepted the fact that everyone from the second they were born was meant to die. Yes, I know, that's why I'm telling you this. Don't even heal any non-ninja from the village. It might be taken the wrong way. Was she concerned for me? This was rather touching. Thanks, mom. A smile appeared on her face at the word mom. Anytime Shiro. We sat in silence for a while longer. Shiro. She started finger drumming on the table again. Yes. After a moment she stopped. Don't bring up experiments anywhere even around your team. If you do need to experiment make sure no one knows of it, not even myself. Ah, uh, oh, this doesn't sound good. Can you tell me the reason? She looked me in the eye, the most serious expression I had ever seen her make was on her face. Greatness and madness are neighbors, and sometimes they borrow each other's sugar. She took a deep breath before continuing. Every great person you'll ever meet is mad to become great. They sacrifice relationships, public perception, morals, family, and even their own well-being. My eyes widened. This wisdom was unexpected. My impression of my mother rose with her words. Shiro, ninja fear greatness. They will fear your greatness. Ninja will do anything to stop greatness before it becomes a problem. She took another breath and continued. When you're great you don't just have to watch your enemies, but also your allies. The third Hokage and Danzo Shimura being a prime example. Danzo and the third used to be friends, but the third rose to greatness and became Hokage, a position that Danzo desired. Now Danzo does his best to undermine the third. She stopped for a moment. I figured this was the time to ask a question. Why hasn't the third done something about Danzo? I knew that it was because of his past friendship. But I wanted to hear an outside perspective. A mix of weakness and morals. The third and Danzo were friends. The third probably thinks fondly of his past friendship with Danzo. And is hesitant to put him in his place. She blinked and looked to the side. No one can ever prove Danzo has done anything. And when they can they disappear. She focused back on me. If the Hokage executed Danzo for something he couldn't prove it would be seen as morally wrong. I sighed and rubbed my eyes. Danzo was one of my biggest worries. And just talking about him was giving me anxiety. Shiro, I believe you will be great. And I want you to hide your greatness for as long as you can, until no one can stop you from doing what you want to achieve. I think that was a nice way of telling me to hide my madness. So, the Hokage thinks I'm mad. My mother sighed and rubbed her nose. You are attracting too much attention and need to hide your greatness. So your life doesn't end before it even begins. She didn't say I wasn't mad I was healing people at every village we stopped at during missions. Should I stop doing that? My mother shook her head. No that's a point in your favor. It's the reason you're not being interrogated by a Yamanaka right now. I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I was pretty close to a session of mind rape. Is there anything else I should be aware of? She hummed and thought. Keep making attempts at friendship with your teammate and stay friends with Guy. Those were both a point in your favor. I was mentally thanking the power of youth when my mother continued interrupting my thought. Your Jonin sensei is also tasked to watch you, so be careful of what you say and do around him. I felt a bit of betrayal, but realized that this was Minato I was thinking about, the man who will sacrifice himself and his child for the village. I doubt he would lose any sleep if I were to die for the betterment of the village. Thanks mom. That got another smile out of her. Anytime Shiro, sorry for ranting at you about madness. I was anxious. I smiled at her. No worries. I appreciate the warning and enjoy talking to you. I needed that warning. I would have bumbled my way into a Yamanaka mind rape. My toes curled at the thought. I couldn't wait to get out of this shithole. Thanks again mom and good night. She smiled at me. Good night Shiro. I made my way to my room. I figured I wouldn't get any sleep tonight. But at least I could curl up in my bed and be comfortable while I stewed in anxiety. I had so many experiments I wanted to do. The reason I hadn't started on them was that I needed long-term test subjects. 
I knew I couldn't stop on my path of medical ninjutsu. It had gotten me the most results after all. Side, do I need to pursue something else for a while until I'm not under scrutiny? Perhaps Fuinjutsu. Fuinjutsu tied nicely into medical ninjutsu, and I had planned to look into the strength of a hundred seal anyway. The next day I sent a clone to the Hayuga and public libraries they were tasked with looking for books and scrolls about Fuinjutsu, so I could later burn it into my memory. I sent a third clone to go see Kishina and ask what she knew about the strength of a hundred seal. I was headed shopping I had to find a new outfit. I no longer deserved to wear a youthful jumpsuit. The Hyuga library clone predictably had no luck finding stuff about seals. The public library had some of the basics, but nothing that would let me go past making a basic storage seal. The clone that I sent to Kushina was missing in action, so I figured he was dragged into some sort of traumatic social experience, and would be a while longer. I was still looking around for a new outfit I wanted something white. But was hesitating. I'd look good, but it'd also have to buy a new set of clothes if I got blood all over them, which was pretty much a given. Sai, I exited the store with my outfit after many assurances from the clerk that there are cleaners capable of getting blood out of clothing. Both the shirt and pants of my outfit were white. I had wanted a white sweater, but I couldn't find any white pants that looked good with it. So, I ended up with a baggy shirt and pant combo. I disliked the buttons, but I was willing to put up with them. I wonder what my clone is doing. When they last this long, they usually start acting silly. I was a bit worried about what my clone had gotten up to, but figured that it would hinge if it wanted to pull something side time to get home. I was taking my pre-sleep shower when my clone dispelled. The clone had gone to Kishina and was promptly manhandled. The clone finally got down to business when it was having its nails painted. Kishina. She didn't stop painting my nails as she responded. Yes, Shiro. How do I word this? I'm looking to learn about the strength of a hundred seal. I figured, since you know a lot about Fuinjutsu, I'd ask you about it. Kishina bit her lip for a moment and paused her nail painting. The strength of a hundred seal doesn't have a lot to do with Fuinjutsu. It has more to do with chakra control. She refocused her attention back to my nails and resumed painting. The easiest way I can explain it is that you're crafting a seal with your chakra. When you finish the seal, you can use it to store excess chakra. Kishina moved on to the next nail this time changing colors. In order to make the seal, you have to constantly store most of your chakra at a point in your forehead for three years straight. This also means while you are asleep. This can only be done by people who have excellent chakra control. Kishina finished with my fingernails and moved on to my toenails. When making the seal you have to dedicate about 80% of your chakra reserves, meaning that you will only be able to use the remaining 20%. It was quiet for a moment, and Kishina started humming to herself. I was quietly contemplating the seal. I had needed to slow down anyway. But this seal was a three year long investment. I brought up my memory of the timeline. I still had about four years until the war. That seemed like enough time to make the seal. But in those three years, I wouldn't improve much, and my combat power would be extremely limited. I wouldn't be able to make any more progress on my ninjutsu. I probably wouldn't be able to use any ninjutsu at all. And would the Hyiga elders take the chance to seal me when my attention was focused on making the seal? What if they did and I had to fight back? Would I have to restart the seal? Kishina. She was done my right toes and had moved on to the left ones. Yes. I think I need the seal. Where could I get the scroll for the technique? It was such a huge boost in combat power and survivability I couldn't pass it up. I could get it for you. My sensei practiced the technique. You only need permission from the Hokage. Damn Roblox. Could you ask the Hokage for me? I didn't want to ask him. Or Shiro. Are you shy? Sure, let's go with that. Yes. The Hokage is my idol. And I can't even get a word out in his presence. I tried my best to sound nervous. Oh, that's so cute. Don't worry Shiro will ask the Hokage for you. I smiled. Thanks Kishina, this means a lot to me. She smiled back at me. Eventually, the clone's nails were finished, and Kishina had no more things to braid or paint, so he exited the apartment, and made his way to the forest where he could dispel. I was still in the shower I had sat down and was letting the water hit my back, while I got lost in thought, my healing factor would benefit a lot from the seal. The only limit to my healing was the amount of chakra I had, and with the seal that would no longer be a problem. I would be almost unkillable. That alone was worth the three years of probable stagnation. To prepare for the seal it'd have to be better at managing my chakra, and I'd have to map out the chakra cost of all my techniques, and then only stick to low cost techniques. That meant no shadow clones and no lightning release. I had meant to create the Rasengan, but that might be impossible as well. Sigh the benefits were greater than the costs. I stood up and turned off the shower. 
Sire, I might not even be allowed to learn the technique. I guess I'll see what happens. It was three days after I had talked to Kishina about the strength of a hundred seal. I was six days into my week-long break. I had gotten up early and planned on measuring the amount of chakra required for my techniques. I headed to the door pencil and notebook in hand. My mother stopped me before I got out of the door. Shiro, don't exhaust yourself, me and you have to talk tonight. Again. Yep, no problem. Oh boy, I arrived at the third training ground. I had wanted to test all my techniques. But most of my techniques didn't have a set chakra cost. Meaning most of my techniques can have a small or a large cost depending on how powerful I want the effects. The Gentle Fist was one such technique. The Gentle Fist injects chakra into an opponent's chakra system, causing damage to any organs connected to the chakra pathways that are hit. The amount of chakra used in the Gentle Fist depended on the chakra of the opponent. If I didn't use enough chakra the opponent could overcome any chakra I've injected them with. If I used too much I'd kill or cripple my opponent, which was the goal most of the time. So, I usually have to adjust the amount of chakra I use on the fly. Most of the Gentle Fist moves were low cost, like the Gentle Fist art. Tenketsu Needle. The Hayuga used this to block Tenketsu the Gentle Fist Art. One blow body, on the other hand was a high cost technique. I thought back to Takama blabbering about it. A technique born from a Hayuga's innate ability to expel chakra from every Tenketsu on their body. A member of the Hayuga clan can hit their opponent with a blast of chakra that will send them flying away from the user. This technique can be used with pinpoint accuracy to target the weak point of an opponent's technique, allowing you to dispel it. Takuma said he once used the technique to escape from a water prison jutsu when fighting a Mist Nin. This jutsu was only useful if you were stupid enough to get caught like Takuma. I didn't have a water user on hand, so I couldn't test it si well. Let's start with writing down all my moves, and then I can work on identifying their chakra usage, and then it'll go from there no cost. Academy to Jutsu, the power of youth, variable cost. Automatic regeneration mystical palms gentle fist to Jutsu gentle fist art. Tenketsu needle Byakugan 150 meters predator. Heat, vision, magnify, speed slash distance reading. Thief 8 trigrams. 8 to 64 palms gravity seal one for all. Low cost. Kokoro no Kaoka, mind dash, Chikaku no Kaoka, perception. Henge body replacement standard clone shunchen, thrown weapon version included, chakra scalpels and aesthetic jutsu chakra strings 8 trigrams. Vacuum palm, mid cost, lightning release, lightning arrow lightning release, lightning strike gentle fist art, one blow body 8 trigrams. Vacuum wall palm kanyoku kaoka, muscular enhancement, high cost, shadow clone 8 trigrams, mountain crusher chakra transfer technique, looking at my list while scratching my chin. I decided that it wasn't half bad. A good portion of my moves are low cost, and that was by design. I after all, didn't want to waste half my chakra on a move that an enemy would likely dodge. Any variable cost moves were used depending on the situation and the amount of chakra needed. I had thought about Shunshin being put under variable cost, but decided that I only really used it in low cost situations. Kinyoku Kaoka was the one technique I was upset about. I wouldn't be able to use it when I had other stuff to do during the day. If I only had 20% of my chakra, I might need to take a desk job. I looked at the sun and saw that I had around 5 hours of free time. Um guy should be getting out of the academy soon. I think I'll go see guy and I'll bring him some food while I'm at it. I was sitting on a tree branch watching the academy, food in hand. It was only a short 5 minute wait until a stream of students started to exit the academy. I watched faces both new and familiar pass, until I saw Guy exit the door with a youthful bounce in his step. I jumped down from the tree and started making my way to Guy. I heard the cannon fodder make some comments about me playing ninja, but I ignored it and continued. Eventually, Guy and I met Ice, my most youthful friend Shiro. Nice going Guy, now everyone is staring at us. Hello Guy, I brought lunch in preparation for our youthful training. My reply was quieter but no less youthful. Yosh, I shall train twice as hard with a full stomach. Guy ended his yell with a nice guy pose. I figured I should match his youthful enthusiasm. A most youthful idea my dear guy. We shall fan our flames of youth. I ended my yell with my nice guy pose. Now everyone still at the academy was staring at us. Time to make my escape. Guy let's not waste any time. We must fan our flames of youth. I promptly started running towards the third training ground. I was eager to escape the stairs. Yosh. Guy followed after me. And we both kicked up a trail of dirt as we were leaving I came home mentally tired but physically youthful. By physically youthful I of course mean dressed in a youthful jumpsuit. Even after getting my outfit I still like dressing youthful sometimes I was on my way to the bathroom when I came across my mother. I gave a nod of acknowledgement as I passed her. Just as I was about to enter the bathroom she spoke. Meet me in the dining room after your shower. 
Oh, yeah, I forgot I couldn't enjoy my shower as I was busy wondering about what our talk would be about. I got dressed and made my way to our dining room. My mother was already seated and was enjoying some tea she had brewed. I took my seat and waited for her to begin. The Hokage called me and Minato into his office yesterday. Don't leave me hanging. What for? A slight smile appeared on my mother's face. Kishina has been very insistent that you learn the strength of a hundred seal. I hope that smile also meant there was good news to be had. Any good news? The smile disappeared from my mother's face. The Hokage wants to meet with you and talk about it. Fuck. Do you know why? And when does he want to meet with me? My mother shook her head and took a sip from her tea before replying. He just asked us our thoughts about you. So I don't know why. She again took a sip of her tea. And you're scheduled to meet him tomorrow at 7. I was curious about what Minato had to say. She went to take another sip of tea. But I snatched the cup away from her. What did Minato say about me? She ignored me snatching her cup and grabbed my empty cup. She filled it almost to the brim with tea and started sipping from it, ignoring my question. Eventually, she spoke. He didn't say anything good. He was worried that you cared about your own goals. More than the villagers, of course. I didn't give a shit about the village. But what tipped him off? What gave him that impression? She rolled her eyes. He believes that your experimentation on the bandits was purely to advance your strength. And that you would do anything to gain more power. Minato wasn't wrong. But damn it, I would have left those bandits alone. If I knew they would be causing me future problems. Is Minato the reason the Hokage is suspicious of me? She nodded but didn't answer my question. Take tonight to think about what the Hokage might ask you and what you could say in response. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? A little more warning would have been nice. She smiled at me. I didn't want to make you anxious. Fair enough I suppose. Sigh thanks, I appreciate it. I stood up and started heading to my room so I could panic in peace. Good night Shiro. I nodded at her. Good night mom. The next day I was seated in the waiting room of the Hokage Tower. I arrived 30 minutes early as usual. Even if I was headed right into a mind rape session, I still wanted to be on time eventually. The receptionist broke me out of my dark thoughts. The Hokage will see you now. Off to my death. I go thanks. I made my way to his office every step I took my nervousness increased. Finally, I stopped at the door to his office and took a moment to compose myself before knocking. A N O C K asterisk K N O C K asterisk K N O C K asterisk the door opened and I was met with Kishina. Hello Shiro. I was promptly snatched up and carried into the room I was still in Kishina's arms. While the Hokage stared at me. I was feeling better with Kishina here, but figured that was the point, and that I shouldn't let my guard down. I heard you are interested in the strength of a hundred seal. I'm extremely interested. Yes, Hokage-sama I tried to bow even with my body restrained. I normally wouldn't give it to a genin, but Kishina was extremely insistent. He trailed off at the end and stared at Kishina. Kishina replied with a yet popping the pee at the end. Before I give it to you, however... I want to ask you a question. I was panicking but tried my best to keep my face neutral. What's your question Hokage-sama? I was dying inside as he stared at me. What was the reason you experimented on those bandits? Fuck. He let a Ruchimaru experiment, why can't I? I wanted to find a way to improve musculature through medical ninjutsu. The Hokage's gaze sharpened, and I trailed off mid-sentence why. Fuck off. Why are you on my ass? Bullshit no jutsu activate. I was trying to find a way to grow chakra reserves. The Hokage narrowed his eyes. Hum continue. Did he buy it or is he humoring me? I was trying to find a way to grow physical energy. So people with lots of spiritual energy would have their chakra reserves increase. He nodded. Like the Nara and the Yamanaka. Yes. Jump to conclusions. And the Kurama clan. Kishina added from behind. Yes. Everything I did is for the village. It wasn't so I could skip my exercise. Shame it didn't work. After the Hokage said that his posture relaxed slightly, my own body also relaxed, and I felt Kishina squeeze me. The Hokage started running a hand through his chin hair, and stared off lost in thought. Everything was silent, and I took this moment to take a breath and calm myself. The Hokage regained focus and barked out an order. Bring me the scroll containing the strength of a hundred seal. I was wondering what that was about when a scroll dropped from the ceiling and into the Hokage's palm. I looked up only to see that the ceiling was closed. In my nervousness, I forgot that the Ambu were a thing. I blinked and focused back onto the Hokage. He held the scroll towards me waiting for me to take it. Kishina do you mind? I want it down. Sure. Kishina stepped forward and took the scroll from the Hokage's hand. I meant could you put me down? I got a prompt no. But at least my hands were now free. I took the scroll from Kishina and waited for the Hokage to dismiss us. The scroll cannot leave the Hokage tower. Okay then. Can I read it here? The Hokage nodded and started shuffling papers around his desk no longer looking at us. 
Alrighty I unfold the scroll and got to reading. The strength of a hundred sil is a jutsu that is reputed to be the pinnacle of chakra control. By storing vast amounts of chakra over an extended period into a specific point on the body, usually the forehead, the user creates this seal, which manifests in the form of a rhombus-like marking. When released, the seal will either spread across the user's face or wrap around their entire body. The stored chakra is then released into the body, greatly amplifying the power of their techniques. The seal will permanently remain even when the stores of chakra are exhausted. To form the seal you must. It doesn't say anything about using 80% of my chakra. I thought I would be restricted to 20% of my reserves for the next three years. The Hokage madam looked at me. Who told you that? The one his man handling me. Kishina did. The Hokage shook his head. She would be right if you had genin level reserves. I felt Kishina shrug. Oops, Tehe. What do you mean oops? So how long would it take me to learn it? The Hokage met again while tapping his pen on his desk. Your reserves are at Jonin level, it'd take about six months if you put almost every bit of chakra you have into making the seal. My jaw dropped. Assuming you didn't mess up of course. I didn't know how to feel Kishina why I'll take things the things she says less seriously from now. On I had prepared myself for three years of stagnation. I blew a breath out of my nose trying to refrain from sighing. I didn't know if sighing in front of the Hokage would be considered rude. I looked at the Hokage and saw he was no longer focusing on us and had returned to his paperwork. I decided that I should do the same and started memorizing the scroll with Kokoro no Kaioka. Kishina I'm ready to go. She stepped forward allowing me to drop the scroll on the Hokage's desk. The second the scroll left my hand Kishina started speed walking towards the door. Kishina can you let me go? I was ignored. She instead shunshined directly to the Ichiraku Raymond stand. It seems we might be having a celebratory meal. After meeting the Hokage I spend the last day of my week-long break with Guy in youthful training. What a weird world I live in, youthful training is my way to Destress Minato decided that we would eat at a restaurant to celebrate how well we have been doing as a team. I didn't mind free food, but I wasn't interested in spending more time with Kakashi and Minato than necessary. Minato, Kakashi, and I sat together at a small booth. We were of course silent. Minato seems to have given up on me and Kakashi ever being friends, and had accepted this as normal. So, the booth was silent while we waited for a waitress to come to get our order. We were about mid-meal when I decided that it was time to broach the topic of the strength of a hundred seal. I'm learning a new technique that will take around six months to learn. Kakashi didn't show any sign of paying attention and was still sneaking bites. But Minato was looking at me. During those six months I will be unable to do missions. Minato blinked while Kakashi continued eating. So, I'm leaving the team. Kakashi twitched but didn't react any more than that. Minato looked lost in thought. Eventually Minato broke the silence that had befallen the table. We'll miss you during these six months and we'll make sure to check in now and then. Kakashi had nodded in agreement and went back to eating his food. Ah, uh, I won't be coming back after those six months. I'm leaving team Minato permanently. Minato and Kakashi looked at me in shock. Things have fallen silent again, and I picked up my fork and started eating my yakisoba. I didn't want to eat cold soba after all. Minato interrupted my meal with a question. Why are you leaving? So, Kakashi doesn't sacrifice me to complete a mission. So, Minato doesn't have more opportunities to make trouble for me so... I can get on a team with some less important meat shields. So, canon can somewhat be preserved. There were many reasons. Bullshit no jutsu. I want to make friends. Minato stared at me giving me his full attention. I want to be on a team with friends. And I don't think I will ever have that with team Minato. I went back to eating. While Kakashi and Minato looked to be lost in thought. Will you do one last mission with us tomorrow? As tempting as it was to tell Minato to fuck off. I decided that it was best to end our time together on a high note. Yes. I went back to eating. Minato and Kakashi soon returned to eating as well. Kakashi and Minato both looked to be in a bad mood. I wonder why Kakashi. And I met at the base of the Hokage Tower. Minato arrived about a minute after which was unusually early for him. Shiro, you picked the mission. Okay. Minato led me to the mission desk. Hum escort a merchant to the border of rain and back escort a merchant from the land of claws escort a merchant from rice to grass. I hate merchants. Can I choose a B rank mission? Minato nodded. As long as it's within the land of fire. Hum alright I had narrowed my mission choice down to a guard mission and a bandit elimination slash rescue mission. So did I want the month long guard mission or did I want the short mission involving brutal murder brutal murder? It is we set off from the west gate. I figured I'd catch Kakashi up on the mission while we ran. Today we're hunting bandits. Kakashi nodded. The bandits are hiding somewhere north of Tanzaki Guy. They've taken a noble's wife hostage, so we have to rescue her. Kakashi nodded again before asking a question. Why was she taken hostage? For money. Probably for money. I didn't know nor care. We were following a river north of Tanzaki Guy. 
I was activating my Byakugan every few minutes trying to spot the bandits. The plan was that Kakashi and I would take out some bandits, then henge into them and infiltrate the camp. I thought it was unnecessarily complicated and made my thoughts known. Minato responded with a good point. He said we need infiltration experience, and that this was an opportunity to get some hands-on experience. Fair enough we continued traveling along the river until we eventually found the camp. The camp wasn't much, just seven tents around a fire with the leader and hostage occupying the largest tent. The leader's chakra was a little under Genin level I looked around the camp. Their hostage was well kept and looked unmolested. Though considering that she was of noble birth, she might have thought of the conditions she was in as hellish. There were only seven bandits, three were scouting the perimeter of the camp, and the other four were in the camp, one was at the fire, the rest were sleeping, and the leader was watching their hostage. I relayed this information to the team and waited for permission to start. Okay since there's no danger, watch the patrol's routes. And when it gets dark trade places with one of them when you have the opportunity. It was finally dark. I was following above my intended target as soon as he got a little farther away. I'd jump down and trade places with him. Eventually the time came. I jumped down and killed him with a gentle fist strike to the head. I carried his body a distance away so it wouldn't accidentally be seen. I had spent my day staring at him so I was familiar with his visage. A quick henge later and I had assumed my disguise now, I just had to follow his route, until I meet up with his fellow guard. And then I'll see how it goes from there, I was using the Byakugan's predator vision to keep track of the bandits. While I followed the route, I was enjoying my nice little walk, and humming a tune as a bandit approached. I gave him a nod and tried to continue past him, but was stopped. Agala. That's probably my bandit's name I deactivated my Byakugan hum. I watched him shuffle his feet nervously. Can you walk with me? No, I've got people to murder. What for? I watched on weirded out as the bandit blushed. Don't M make me say it. Were these two bandits boyfriends or something? I smiled. Come on say it. He turned away from me and was silent. I am afraid of the dark. Really? What do I even do with this? Alright follow me. He started a quick thanks and started following me. My new bandit buddy was incredibly nervous, or a little bit autistic and thus wouldn't stop talking. Eventually we reached an area that was a good distance from the camp. I led the bandit into the shadow of a large tree. I wish these trees didn't block the moon at least then we'd be able to see something. My bandit buddy nodded. Yeah, it got darker. And I'm getting scared. I can't believe you're a real person a bandit who rapes and pillages is scared of the dark. It's a good thing we're walking together. The bandit got closer to me. Yay, it's super scary walking alone. The bandit was now invading my personal space. My buddy's new closeness brought with it the smell of someone that hadn't showered in a week. It's a shame I have to go back alone. The bandit uttered a wah before he died from a gentle fist strike to the head. I had regained my personal space and my silence. I resumed my route, this time with a clone disguised as my bandit buddy. I decided that this was the way to go. I'd make my way around and replace the bandits with my clones. The bandit manning the fire left to take a piss. He got replaced by a clone. Eventually, it was time for a shift change. The two bandits plus one clone were gathered around the fire and ordered to go out and replace the scouts. The bandit coming my way was killed and the fire watching clone was dispelled. And I continued to the camp. Kakashi and I were both henged and everything had gone according to plan so far. We met at the fire. Kakashi raised an eyebrow at my clone. I mouth cloned to him and winked. He winked back. Kakashi was making hand signs at me, likely telling me the plan sadly. I didn't remember any hand signs. I had forgotten them the moment I left the academy. So, I just nodded my head now and then, pretending I understood what he was signing. Kakashi stopped signing and looked at me expectantly. I had no idea what he wanted. Kakashi was starting to look annoyed. We had been staring at each other for a while. Now honesty is the best policy. I guess. I forgot what all the hand signs mean Kakashi stared at me in disbelief. My clone joined him in staring. I stared back unashamed. Kakashi broke the silence. I killed the bandit that was sent to change with me. Did you do the same? I nodded. Only the leader is left. I responded with a thumbs up. So, who gets to rescue the hostage? I pointed at him. You do. Kakashi sighed and made his way over to the bandit leader's tent. I was sitting by the fire and enjoying its warmth. If Kakashi needed any help I'd toss a sunshine kunai at the bandit. But I doubted it'd come to that. Kakashi was standing in front of the leader's tent. Hiroto Sama. How did he get the leader's name? I guess he tortured it out of his bandit weight. Should I have tortured my bandits as well? A bald head poked out of the tent. Where'd you want? Kakashi grabbed him by the head and pulled him out of the tent. Huh. Wah. His life was ended with a swift stab through the ribs. He used the war walking technique to grab the bandit which was extremely impressive. Nicely done Kakashi. Minato arrived with a smile on his face while Kakashi was untying the hostage. Good work. His smile vanished. But can you tell me what you did wrong? I answered first hoping to get this over with. I didn't get any information from my target. 
Minato nodded. Yes, you also didn't know Kanoha's standard sign language. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Kakashi, what about you? Kakashi just shrugged. You didn't hide your bodies very well. Kakashi nodded. Our hostage had a rag around her mouth so she couldn't contribute. Our hostage was set free. Minato and Kakashi were talking with her while I wandered around the camp by Akigan Active. I was looking for some sort of loot, but was having no luck. My quest for loot ended with no success. One day I might find some hidden loot. But today wasn't that day I returned to see Minato and Kakashi still talking to the hostage. What's the hold up? It was Kakashi who answered. She doesn't want to travel at night. Knock her out? Then she won't be traveling at night. Put our ex hostage in a Jinjutsu. Make it seem like it's daytime. Minato sent me a judgmental look. And I raised an eyebrow at him. The ex hostage interrupted our silent communication. I'm not just a hostage. I have a name. Are you ignoring me Kakashi and I locked eyes. I mouthed Jinjutsu to him and winked twice. Kakashi sighed and started going through hand signs. Sleep. She fell unconscious and was caught by Minato, who had a look of disapproval on his face. I sent Kakashi a thumbs up. We were traveling south to Tanzaka Guy. I had earned the job of carrying the hostage because it was my idea to use Jinjutsu on her. So where are we dropping this? I lifted the now limp woman for emphasis. We're bringing her to her house in Tanzaku's west district. Okay, I spent the rest of the trip amusing by myself waving at Kakashi with the woman's limp hand. We finally arrived. I was tired of carrying dead weight and wanted to get some food. Sensei, if you take this I'll go get us some food. I took her hand and waved it at Minato. Sai, meet us at the inn in the east district no problem. Yes, Sensei. A grin split my face as I left. I was happy to get some greasy street food. I arrived at the inn food in hand. I took a moment to scan the inn with my bayak again, before proceeding to the window to our room. We were all seated and enjoying our food when Minato threw an annoying question at me. I'm surprised you didn't want those bandits alive, Shiro. I raised an eyebrow and hummed at him. Did you not need to do any more experiments? Minato didn't want to let it go, no. I found something different to experiment on. Minato sent a chilling stare my way. I blinked at the look he was giving me. Cats have nine lives. It makes them ideal for experimentation. Minato stopped staring at me and blew a loud breath out of his mouth. Was that a joke? No, yes. There was no more conversation that night. I woke up with a smile on my face. I was excited to get my day on with and depart from Team Minato once and for all. Minato and Kikashi didn't share my joy and have been looking at me weirdly. What's got you in a good mood, Shiro? Minato seemed suspicious about my good mood. Bullshit no jutsu. I've decided I want to adopt. Kikashi side-eyed me and Minato looked confused. What are you talking about? I don't know myself I'm making it up as I go. I've always heard the saying one man's trash is another man's treasure, so I've decided to adopt an orphan. Minato's jaw dropped and Kikashi was staring at me. Minato composed himself first. I don't think that saying is meant for orphans. I just continued to smile and started humming a tune, when it was clear that no one had anything else to say. Eventually, we made it back to Kanoha. The trip back was quiet and nothing noteworthy happened. When we got through the gates I turned to Minato and Kakashi. Well it's been fun being on a team and all. I'll see you guys around, though hopefully not too soon. Thanks, Shiro. I enjoyed your company and hope we can still meet up now and then for lunch. Not on your life, Minato. I looked at Kakashi who was silent. Kakashi. He nodded. Never break someone's heart, they only have one. Kakashi nodded again. Break their bones instead, they have 206 of them. Kakashi looked away and scratched his face. Alright I'm off, sire around hopefully I wouldn't see those two bastards for a while. Though who knew Kishina might drag them over I arrived home eager for a shower. I was thinking about the things I'd need to do before I started on the seal when my mom interrupted me. Shiro, delaying my shower seems to be a theme here. She gave me a half smile. We need to talk again. Really? Is she interrupting my shower time on purpose? Let's talk now. My shower can wait. She nodded and started toward the dining room. We were both seated and facing each other. Mom had brought out the tea and was filling her cup when she spoke. The Hoke had scheduled another meeting. Fuck off. What is it this time? The bastard wouldn't leave me alone. Nothing serious. The Hokage wants to know why you permanently left your team, and he's also giving you another look at the strength of a hundred scroll. I didn't need another look, but I apprecated the thought. I just hummed and waited for her to continue. I would also like to know when you decide stuff like that. I blinked at her. Why? She winked at me. If I don't have anything to report to the Hokage, I likely won't be included in the talks about you. You gotta give some to get some got it. Anything else? She took a sip of her tea. I want to train you while you're building the seal. I raised an eyebrow at her. What would we practice? She shrugged. Depends on how far you've gotten since I've last seen you spar. Okay. 
Good point, all right, that it. She nodded and I jumped up, eager to get in the shower. I stopped before I left the room. When's the Hokage want to see me? I heard her chuckle. It's 7 tomorrow morning. All right, now it's shower time. The next morning I was again seated in the waiting room, waiting for my turn to be called. Eventually, an annoyed looking male receptionist told me to proceed, and I made my way to the Hokage's office. I didn't waste any time and knocked as soon as I arrived at the door. Knock, knock, knock. You may enter. Alrighty I opened the door and made my way inside, hoping that this meeting wouldn't be too nerve-wracking. I stood in the middle of the room and gave him a bow. Hokage Sama. I stood still and waited for the Hokage to start. He spent a little time staring at me before he started speaking. It was quite a surprise when I heard you were permanently leaving your team. It was a surprise to me as well I didn't have it planned out until I was filling out my paperwork for a leave of absence. You told Minato the reason you were leaving his team was in search of friendship. The amused tone in his voice told me what he thought of that statement. I just nodded. Sometimes the best answer was no answer. I don't believe that was the real reason. Would you mind sharing your thoughts? Although he asked nicely, I knew it was an order and not a question. I hummed and stared at the ceiling buying myself time to compose my reason in my mind. I had planned on using the same excuse on the hokage when he asked. But he wasn't buying what I was selling. It was a flimsy excuse to begin with. I had just said it to take a shot at Kakashi and Minato. A mistake in hindsight. I focused back on his face. I don't mind telling you. As long as you don't tell Minato or Kakashi. He lifted an eyebrow at me. Hum, what you say here will stay between us. Yes, us and the ambi listing in. When I said I wanted friendship, that was a half-truth. I looked at the floor for a moment. I want a team that wouldn't sacrifice me to complete a mission. I chuckled. I also want people to laugh at my jokes, and by extension friendship. I trailed off and the office descended into silence. What gave you the impression that you would be sacrificed? I didn't think I would be sacrificed, I just wanted to use this opportunity to throw some shade at Minato. Under Minato's cheerful facade is a hidden ruthlessness. I can tell that, should he deem it necessary he wouldn't hesitate to let me die. The Hokage didn't confirm nor deny my words but continued. Ham and Kakashi, he's a bastard. I've tried to reach out to him and become friends on many occasions but was met with disdain. We have no bond and I believe should I become a burden, Kakashi wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice me. I sighed to give myself more time to compose my next reason, but that was only part of why I left my team. I can handle Minato's ruthlessness and Kakashi's apathy as I have faith in my abilities, and believe I can keep myself alive. I tapped my foot trying to disperse some of my nervous energy. Minato is a terrible teacher. That got a surprise blink out of him. How so? I took a deep breath. I don't think I can even call Minato a teacher, as one has to teach something to be a teacher. The Hokage waved his hand. Continue. I started shifting around, an action that was not faked as I was feeling genuinely nervous. Minato never taught me or Kakashi anything during the time we were together. We did weekly spas and Minato gave criticism, but he never actively taught us any ninja skills. Not entirely true, Minato had shown us how to use the fire starting jutsu. Did you ask Minato to teach you anything? No, I hadn't. But should I have had to ask? No. I paused for a moment before continuing. I didn't think Minato liked me so I was too nervous to ask. The Hokage nodded. I waited for him to continue with his line of questioning. But he just stared off into space. I'll have a talk with Minato about his teaching. What happened to this staying between us? The Hokage seemed to have guessed my thoughts. I have ways to look over the village. I'll tell Minato that was how it came to my attention. I gave him another deep bow. Thank you. He gave a nod in response and picked up a scroll on his desk and held it out. This is the strength of a hundred scroll. You can take it into the room across the hall and study it. When you are done leave the scroll on the table. It will be collected later. I bowed again though this time for longer. Thank you. Hokage Sama. Hopefully, this will cause Minato some trouble, though I doubted it would. I sat in the room staring blankly at the scroll I was given. I wasn't sure if anything I had said would be taken seriously, or if it was the right thing to do Minato was causing me trouble so I figured I'd return the favor, though I doubted anything I said would have an effect. Pettiness thy name is Shiro Hayuga I sighed and stood up, leaving the scroll on the desk. I wanted to get home and get a start on the seal. I was seated on my bed gathering chakra on my forehead. I had gotten started as soon as I got home. I currently wasn't having any problems, but figured that I'd start to have difficulty when I had to sleep. Though for now, I was fine. I sighed and stood up. I was hungry and ready to eat. I spent the rest of my day reading and practicing calligraphy before heading off to bed. As I had predicted I was having trouble keeping my chakra under my control while I slept. As soon as I fell asleep my control would start drifting, and the chakra would disperse through my body. The feeling of my chakra dispersing through my body, also woke me up. Sigh, I'd need to keep doing this until holding my chakra in my forehead was an automatic process. 
It might take longer than six months to complete the seal I gathered my chakra, and sent it to my forehead once again. It seems this will be a long night I spent the next two weeks trying and failing to keep my chakra in my forehead while I slept. During the days I would read books from the Hayuga library and sometimes practice calligraphy. I didn't have any luck until today where I had my first uninterrupted sleep in two weeks. I'd see if this kept up for a few more days, and then I'd adjust my schedule. My good luck proved true, and I had a few more days of uninterrupted sleep. Now I was ready to get my ass into gear. I was going to learn all I could from my mother, and then spend some of this free time with Guy and Dai, where I'd further practice to Jutsu. While I used this time to shore up my basics, I'll write down all my ideas for experiments I want to do. I'll have to better plan them so I can use any resources I acquire to the fullest extent. The more I thought about my experiment with the bandit, the more disappointed in myself I got. I could have used that opportunity better, and made better use of my time. That experiment caused me a lot of grief. I think that was the last time I'll experiment around anyone else I was sitting with my mom, and enjoying a cool drink. We had been training for a few hours and were now taking a break. I had been pondering the whys and hows of human intelligence when my mother spoke. You need a plan for when you rejoin the active shinobi force. What was she talking about? What do you mean? I got an eye roll in response. When you become an active shinobi again, you will have to choose between joining a team that has lost a member or joining the Genin Corps. I didn't like either of those options. Is there a research and development department I can join? She nodded. Yes. But it's not something you should waste time on. What was the deal? How so? She looked absently into the distance while she spoke. If you joined research and development you wouldn't have time to pursue your projects. Anything you do would be for the village. But how does Orochimaru get to experiment? She continued. To get time for your research you have to prove your worth to the village or have good connections. So, I need connections or I need to prove my worth that's annoying so. My time is better spent pursuing projects on my own. She nodded. Yes, at least until you establish yourself as valuable enough to have your own lab. That's annoying I decided to change the topic. Is there anything you would recommend I take the time to learn? She shook her head. Not that I can think of at the moment. Hopefully, that means I'm doing well. Alright, I've rested enough let's get back to it. Daylight is burning after all. I woke up to someone knocking on my window. The knocking stopped and I laid in my bed, wondering who was so eager to die on this fine morning. The knocking started again, and I rolled out of bed, ready to find out who was bothering me. I opened the curtains and came face to face to Kishina. I heard a muffled good morning Shiro, from outside. I just stared in disbelief. I opened the window and let Kishina in. I told her to make herself at home while I showered. I returned to see that Kishina had indeed made herself at home. She was sitting on my bed curled up in my blankets. Why are you violating my bed? My place of comfort what brings you here? I was happy to see her but also annoyed at being woken up. I wanted to see you. And, what for? Seriously the sun isn't even up yet. I was thinking about you, Shiro. I wasn't sure I believed it, but I'd give her the benefit of the doubt. Alright, what do you want to do? How do I continue this interaction? I want to know what you've been up to. Kishina was of course still on my bed and rolled up in my blankets, and I was leaning against the wall out of grabbing distance. I've just been practicing Tajutsu and reading, since I don't have access to my chakra. I also spent my time wallowing in near crippling anxiety and thinking about the future. Oh, that's good. Tajutsu is like the most important part of being a ninja. I'd say chakra is the most important part of being a ninja. But I know what you mean Kishina Kishina, and I continued chatting for a while longer, before I decided that I might as well introduce her to my mother since she was here. Kishina we're going to go see my mother. I figured I'd give her no choice in the matter. That's some social food that I learned from Kishina. Yay, let's go see her. What's her name? She had a broad grin on her face. I have no idea. I've always called her mom. Well, I called her mother until recently I laid Kishina down the hall into the dining room which was the space my mom occupied for a good part of the morning. My mother was in the dining room as expected. She didn't look too happy to have a guest though. I watched as she frowned at Kishina while she introduced herself. Hi, I'm Kishina Yuzumaki, what's your name? Blunt and to the point, this was the reason I liked Kishina. My name is Sumiko, it's nice to meet you Kishina. Sumiko meant child of goodness or beautiful child. It's a good name my mom and Kishina continued talking for a while. I looked at the gentle smile that had replaced her earlier frown, and decided that things were alright, and my presence wasn't needed. I think it's time for breakfast perhaps some fruit today. I was three months into making the strength of a hundred seal, and a year out of the academy. 
Things were going well. I spent plenty of time with my mom, Dai and Guy, and my training was going well. But my latest foray into medical ninjutsu had met with great success. I had diverted a little chakra that was meant for the seal, and used it to run the diagnostic jutsu on different people. People like Kyushina and myself with healing factors, have an abundance of stem cells that are responsible for the regeneration of any injury that occurs. Normal people still have stem cells, but to a much lesser extent than Kyushina and I. I believe that as long as my stem cells can continue to divide and replace any of my dying cells, I'll probably never die. Your cells could only divide a certain amount of times before they die. That's essentially what aging is. As long as I have stem cells available my body won't deteriorate in the same way a normal body would with aging so. I had an exciting thought. Could I become biologically immortal? If I found a way to keep my stem cells young. I remembered something from my old world. People were injecting stem cells into injured areas to heal the injury quickly. Mainly because their body's natural cells didn't divide enough to heal the injury by itself. So, the introduction of new cells speeds up healing. As they have a higher capacity to divide. My body could be as young as my stem cells. Could I introduce younger stem cells into my body? And slow or halt my aging? By replacing my old cells with young cells. What if I lost my healing factor? Or my chakra changed with the introduction of new cells. I had high hopes that it wouldn't be the case I'd be able to experiment more when my chakra was not being used to make the seal, as it was my use of the diagnostic jutsu was the limit of what I could do. Stem cells might be the answer to biological immortality. It'd take a lot of stem cells to remake a whole body. I might have to become a stem cell vampire to live forever my training continued. I did some much needed stealth training and spent a good amount of time learning Kanoha's sign language. I was currently eating dinner with my mom when she gave me an unexpected offer. Shiro, when you rejoin the active shinobi forces are you interested in apprenticing under me? I blinked at her offer. Sorry, but I don't know what exactly you do. Was she a frontline fighter? A medic of some sort? A scout? I specialize in hunting and tracking, meaning she hunted slash chased missing nin which sounded better than escort and guard missions. Are you an Anbu? I knew Mist had hunted Nin, but did Kanoha. My question cracked her up and she snorted. No, I wouldn't have had a Genin team if I was in the Anbu. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I'd like to know more about what you do before I decide. I've got plenty of time anyway. She nodded. That you do Shiro, that you do. We went back to our meal. I was sitting on my bed staring at my notepad of possible experiments. It was written in a mix of French and half-remembered English. I had quite a few ideas. Most of the ideas were good, but all of them were poorly planned. I was an idea guy. Planning wasn't my strong suit stem cell vampire. Replacing aging cells with young stem cells, possibly restoring youth. Pros. Biological immortality. Cons. Not needed for a long time. Need ways to store accumulated stem cells, possible cell rejection. Could change body slash chakra. Could affect healing factor, expensive chakra and time wise. Super cool bone weapons. Using stem cells to make bone weapons with my already impressive bones. Pros. Stabby stabby, cheat chakra conductive weapons, weapons easy to repair, biodegradable. Cons. Chakra expensive, uses lots of stem cells. Thus shortens life expectancy a bit, can only make kunai shuriken and senbon, unless new weapon skills are learned. Super cool bone weapons part 2 making super cool hidden bone weapons in my body. Pros. Can be my cool hidden move possible wolverine claws. Can use wolverine claws to extract stem cells, stabby stem cell vampire. Cons. Must alter hand and body anatomy for claws, possible pain. No automatic sheathing of weapons, must learn to fight with hand claws. Biological absorption. An ability used by a transformed Chiko. Chiko absorbs chakra and flesh, and uses it to restore himself. Pros. Cockroach. Harder to kill, a possible improvement to stem cell vampire. Cons. No idea where to start. Human chakra batteries. Sunade can transfer chakra from her seal to allies. Can I do the reverse and steal chakra from enemies? Pros. More chakra possible way to introduce Otsutsuki Chakra into my Byakugan. Cons. The enemy must be unconscious and unable to fight back. Deadpool Immortality. Cancer cells have unlimited division potential and are immortal. Pros. Immortality. Deadpool. Cons. Looking like Deadpool, the possibility of becoming a giant tumor, very likely to go wrong. The brain and intelligence. The brains of some people just seem to work more efficiently. What makes their brains different? And can I do the same to myself? Pros. Increased intelligence slash cognitive ability. Cons. Possible brain injury. Have to scan many brains, possibility of making test subjects smarter and less dangerous. Tail beast immortality. Can I turn myself into a chakra construct? Pros. Immortality. Cons. Easy to seal. Farfetched idea. No idea where to start, can be eaten by an Otsutsuki. Flexibility. Orochimaru is seen to have snake-like flexibility with the same benefit me. Pros. 
Cons. A retromaric comparisons to Jutsu will have to be adjusted. Removing fingerprints. It's both extremely easy and relatively painless to remove fingerprints with medical ninjutsu. Pros. I leave no fingerprints. Cons. Might not be necessary. Never seen fingerprints used for anything in Naruto-verse. Otsutsuki, limb slash flesh graft. Madara had Hashirama's cells grafted onto himself giving him wood release. Could I do the same with Otsutsuki cells? Pros. Possible path to the Tensigan. Cons. No Otsutsuki until after Kagaya. I might have to take a chance and go for Kagaya's cells. My ideas were listed according to how much I liked the idea, with stem cell vampire being my favorite and somehow getting Otsutsuki flesh being my least favorite. The ideas were all cool and theoretically possible, as all good ideas should be. Sadly, there were just that. Ideas and ideas they would remain, until I had access to my chakra. Which wouldn't be for around three more months I was dying of boredom. I was now trying to kill my boredom with the power of youth. Guy and I were currently running around Kanoa trying to build endurance. My endurance was supported by my healing factor most of the time, but because of my shortage of chakra, I was lagging behind my youthful friend, which was unacceptable. I must fan my flames of youth. My most youthful friend Shiro, I thought you said you were behaving unyouthfully. That was a most excellent display of youth. Indeed, it was. I reached deep inside myself and found a hidden well of youthful enthusiasm, and used it to fan my flames of youth. Guy laughed. Ha ha ha, that's the spurt Shiro. We will never be young like this again. Let's not waste our springtime of youth. Guy did his new nice guy pose. A thumbs up, wink, and a winning smile. Guy your nice guy pose has gotten more youthful. I feel like I'm falling behind, but I'm happy knowing that it's you who surpassed me in youthfulness. I gave my nice guy pose, even though it now felt lackluster compared to Guy's. Shiro, how youthful. Guy had a broad grin, even though he was crying a river of tears. Shiro, do you know what gender is? Indeed, I do. Yes. My mom managed to look both annoyed and amused. Why do you keep crossing out male and female? And writing evil is your gender. For my amusement, of course. It's because I am not male or female, I am evil. I struck a pose, one hand on my hip, the other twirling an imaginary moustache. The silence was as painful as it was delicious, and the disapproving gaze sent my way, only fueled my desire for more shenanigans. Although you made some paperwork ninja laugh, you've also annoyed them. Not my problem. I'm sorry to hear that. What do they want me to do? She blew a large breath out of her mouth. They just want you to fill out the forms correctly in the future. That's not going to happen sure, no problem. I'll change my ways, my mother shook her head and left the room. But little did she know evil couldn't be stopped by mere words I looked at my calligraphy from three months ago, and compared it to what I had done today. Man my calligraphy practice had been going well. And by going well I mean that my writing was no longer chicken scratch. It was still unusable for Fuenjutsu, but at least there was visible progress. I decided that was enough calligraphy for today. So I packed up my riding supplies, and set off to the dining room. Mom was seated at the Chabudai and enjoying some tea. I think this is how she relaxes well here comes a difficult topic. So I wanted to talk about this apprenticeship. She hummed but didn't say anything, she just kept sipping her tea. Alrighty I wanted to ask you if you were interested in taking another gen and teen. The grimace I got in response told me how she felt about it. I decided I'd take a step back, and go from there. If you're not interested that's fine. I needed some friends and future allies, as I had very little social skills, teammates were ideal though if my mother wasn't interested that was fine, I'd respect her wishes. Sorry Shiro, I'm not ready for another gen in team. She looked tense and upset, that's fine, no worries, I was thinking of ways to make friends and thought teammates were the ideal friends. She blew a breath out of her nose, and some of the tension left her body. It would be hard to make friends with a team who had just lost a member. So you wanted to create a new team. She guessed my thoughts for the most part. I also thought that by training them myself, we could create a strong bond. I had tried to make friends in my academy days. But who knew making friends was so hard? Yes, that was exactly my thought. But if it makes you unhappy that's fine. You being comfortable and happy is more important than any potential friends I may make. There were always other opportunities. I'd rather wait than cause mom any grief. Mom relax further. Sigh any potential teammates would be older than you as well, even if I took a gen and team. I don't think you would have much luck making friends with kids 3 plus years older than you. Yes, something I hadn't considered age I keep thinking I'm older than I am. That's something I didn't think about, though I should have. Thanks mom, sorry for upsetting you. I walked over and gave her a hug from behind. She stiffened but then relaxed. It's alright Shiro, I'm just not ready for a gen and team. That's fine, no worries. 
I'd rather have some time with just the two of us anyways. No need for any cannon fodder to die and cause mom grief. Let's register for an apprenticeship then. Yes, let's. Sounds good. Though I wouldn't be making friends via teamwork that was fine. Maybe I'd find another way. I was sitting in my room, curled up in my blankets, and fantasizing about bone weapons. I wanted wolverine claws. My main problem was the retracting and extending of the claws. It could probably be done with chakra so maybe it wasn't much of an issue I didn't want to have the claws extend from the knuckles as that involved a lot of anatomy changes. So, claws from the wrists or backhand, but how do I stop them from being ripped from my hands upon contact with something hard after all? It would only be a thin layer of flesh and muscle, holding them there unless I somehow made them part of the tibia or fibula then again. They shouldn't get caught on anything if they are used carefully, they would only be used as a last resort weight. Are they still wolverine claws if they don't come from the knuckles? Whatever there was also the matter of inviting foreign matter into my body via claws I after all didn't want someone's blood being brought into my body. Though perhaps my immune system would take care of it, maybe it'll just stick with making some sort of bone blade within my forearm a hidden weapon that I can pull out when I need it and hidden weapons in the thighs and forearms that might be. The way to go I guess it depends on how fast I can make bone weapons. If it's fast enough I might just pull my spine out and use it as a sword, like the original Shikotsu Myaku. If it's too slow then hidden bone weapons are the way to go I'm so bored I've started rhyming is this why more people don't learn the strength of a hundred seal near crippling boredom. I flip my pillow to get to the cool side. That's the good stuff I wonder if there's anyone who doesn't flip their pillow over if there are. They're filthy savages. I don't think I can be friends with someone who doesn't flip their pillow over. Who would hate themselves enough to not flip their pillow over? Child molesters yes. If you don't flip your pillow over, you're a child molester, and you're punishing yourself for past transgressions. My logic is sound. I was staring at the purple rhombus-shaped seal on my forehead. Using Kishina's bucket analogy, the strength of a hundred seal is like a bucket. You fill it with your excess chakra when you aren't using it, and pour it out when you need it. Pouring it out doesn't break the bucket, it only empties it. It was a lovely seal, but it also stuck out on my forehead like a sore thumb. I had to cover it either with my hair or forehead protector. Though at least there was no caged bird seal on my forehead hair hair. I couldn't stop myself and giggled like a little girl. I couldn't describe the amount of joy I was feeling. This seal made surviving so much easier. The reason most high level ninjas die is that they run out of chakra. With my new seal that was now somewhat unlikely. With my healing factor I was near inexhaustible and extremely hard to kill. I started to do a little dance. My joy couldn't be contained. My mother of course chose that moment to stick her head in. I saw her, stop dancing, then made eye contact. Awkward, but not awkward enough to extinguish my joy. I extended a hand. Dance with me. She promptly disappeared faster than I could see, demonstrating why she was considered a jonin. Fine, I didn't need any company anyways. I resumed my dance alright that's enough. I stopped dancing and returned to the mirror. Having my chakra running free in my body made me feel giddy. I couldn't stop smiling. Finally, life would speed up again and things were looking good. I spent a week getting back into the swing of things. I was once again using chakra strings as much as possible, and sending any extra chakra I had into my seal before I went to bed. I figured that whenever I had the opportunity, I should exhaust my chakra by storing it all in the seal before I go to bed. So that's what I did almost every day before I went to bed. Today was different though. Mom and I had applied for the apprenticeship. Now all we needed was approval from the Hokage. That would hopefully come with some political pressure from the Hayuga elders. They had wanted me with Takuma. So maybe they would settle for my mother instead. The elders haven't caused me problems yet. Though who knew, they could use this opportunity to annoy me. Anyway, we were eating at a restaurant to celebrate my success with the seal. I would have rather done it at home, but mom looked excited at the idea of eating out, so I let it be. I now regretted that decision as seated two tables away from us was Minato and Kakashi, and they had noticed us. I turned my head pretending I didn't see anything, hoping they would do the same. They, of course, did not. Kakashi and Minato approached our table. Shiro, it's been a while. Oh boy conversation yes, it has. Minato and Kakashi look the same as when I had last seen them. I jutted my thumb towards my mom. This is my mom, Sumiko Hayuga. She nodded. Mom, these are my ex-teammates Kakashi and Minato. Minato returned the nod. Things were quiet after the introduction. I had no plans on making small talk, so I stayed quiet hoping this awkwardness would hasten their departure. Minato broke the silence. So, what have you been up to Shiro? He probably wanted to know about my progress on my seal. Oh, I've just been reading and practicing my tajutsu, and training with Guy as well. 
How far are you along on the strength of a hundred seal? Minato usually wasn't this blunt. I've completed it. Minato looked impressed. That's quite the feat. Thanks. Yes, it was quite hard. I understand why more people don't learn the seal. No need for modesty here. I am awesome after all. Um, what are your plans for the future? To become immortal, awaken the tents again, and possibly leave this universe. I'm going to apprentice under my mother. Hopefully him well good luck Shiro. We'll not disturb your meal further. I wish you hadn't disturbed my meal at all. I had spent a week trying to create the Rasengan. Though my Rasengan creation time was cut short when news came that my apprenticeship was approved. Now, I would be doing missions and training under my mother. Which sounded fun, as I was tired of escorting merchants and guarding nobles and rich folk. That seemed to be all I did with Minato. I was waiting in the kitchen for my mother to pick up our first mission together. I had declined to go to the Hokage Tower in favor of getting 15 more minutes of Rasengan practice. I was so close I could taste it wait clones right. I sent two clones off to the third training grounds to practice. I think I'll have the Rasengan down sometime today. My mom arrived with the mission scroll. Today we're doing a B-ranked mission. We're hunting a Kiri missing nin by the name of Sato Mitsuharu, otherwise known as Hidden Miss Sato. I raised an eyebrow. A B-ranked mission right away. I was alright with it, but I wanted to hear her thoughts. There's no need to waste time chasing academy dropouts. I'm doing this so you can get some experience. Alright? How strong is he? And why does he have a cool nickname? I wanted a cool nickname he's high tune and level, and uses the Hidden Mist Jutsu to hide from opponents. So, Sato of the Hidden Mist because he uses the Hidden Mist Jutsu so, we were sent because of our Byakugan. Nice alrighty where are we headed today? Hopefully it wouldn't be a long trip. We're headed to Nagi Island. Fuck. I jinxed myself. That was even further than the Land of Tea. This was at minimum a 7 day mission we were packed and ready to go. The only change to my usual packing was some chakra restraints and a seal that kept your target unconscious. We were supposed to capture the runaway and bring him in alive for interrogation and the most bounty money. Of course, we were supposed to do it before any Mist Hunter Ning got him. I'm not sure I like the sound of this mission. I think I would have preferred chasing some academy graduates. I dispersed my clones as I left the house. They didn't complete the Rasengan whatever. We were three days into our trip, and we were about to reach the border of the Land of Noodles. So, how are we getting to Nagi Island? I hope we weren't water walking there. We are traveling east through the Land of Noodles, and then we'll take a boat from Noodles to Nagi Island. Fuck that was close to Kiri. Why are we getting so close to Kiri? I was starting to get a little anxious. There was a good chance we would run into Kiri Ninja that were our target. It's the shortest route, and I want you to fight any Kiri ninja we encounter. Well, I didn't want to fight any Kiri ninja we encounter. If we fight them, we can't let them live then. I don't want a bounty yet my mom snorted at me. A bounty is exactly what you need. I didn't agree but didn't say anything. I'd rather hear her explanation first. It's a good opportunity to establish yourself as valuable to the village. And maybe get your lab. But also, a good opportunity for some Kiri ninja bath in my blood. I sighed. I didn't want to a bounty yet. But I trusted my mom's experience and wisdom. So, I changed the subject. What's the range of your Byakugan? She blinked at the abrupt change in topic, but answered regardless. Around 5 kilometers. What? Holy shit. How did you increase your range so much? My range was currently at around 200 meters. Meaning she had around 25 times the range I currently had. The more you use the Byakugan the more range you have access to. Range varies between people. Though most Byakugan users range doesn't go beyond 1 kilometer. I was proud of my measly 200 meters when my mom had a range that I couldn't even imagine. And a kilometer was probably my future limit. Unless I could run some scans on some Hyagas to figure out what made their range so much better. I side-eyed my mom. I had an ideal subject. How do you feel about letting me scan your Byakugan? I wondered what made her Byakugan so different from mine. I'm fine with it, as long as it's just a scan. Meaning don't mess with my Byakugan, and you can scan it. Nice. Thanks mom. We were well into noodle country and looking for a boat to board. Mom was using her Byakugan to look, and I was twiddling my thumbs and feeling rather useless. After a few minutes of looking my mom found one. Alright follow me, we're going to sneak onto a ship. We're not paying. Alrighty. We were hiding in a crew member's room on the ship. I figured we'd hide and be sneaky. But no mom just put the guy in a Jinjutsu and took over his room. The guy whose room we took was hard at work. I was using my Byakugan to look at how the Jinjutsu was affecting his brain. A lot was going on in his brain. I couldn't believe a few hand seals could affect the brain like this I decided that I'd look into it another day. I deactivated my Byakugan and settled in for a half a day long trip. Eventually we got close to Nagi Island. Mom and I ran the rest of the way to the island to avoid getting spotted at the port. We were now on land. Now, all we had to do was find this guy. Mom do you have a picture of the guy? She nodded, reached into her pack, and pulled out a bingo book. After flipping 
flipping through it for a few seconds she handed it to me. The man had brown hair and eyes. The only thing of note was his height at 187 centimeters. He was a water release user as well. So where are we looking? I hoped we didn't have to search the whole island for him. To the south there's a small separate 50 kilometer wide island. That's where we're going to search for Sato. Nice. It took the rest of the day to get to the small island, which didn't feel small now that I was standing on it. So, what now? Do we split up and search the island? Stick with me, I'll look for a target, and you'll engage. So, look pretty and wait for my turn. Sounds good it had turned dark in the time it took us to find our target. We got closer so I could watch him from within my Bayakigan's range. He was seated at a fire and cooking some meat, likely his meal. His face looked just like his bingo book, and notably he had the physique of a newborn giraffe. Lanky and tall I was about 120 centimeters to his 187 centimeters. So, take out the legs and then disable him. Yeah. That's the plan. Plan made. I activated Chikaku no Kaoka, deactivated my gravity seal, and slowed my perception slightly. I started making my way towards him. I took note that he had some explosive notes in his pouch. I focused on my pouch. It just so happened that I lacked explosive notes. How kind of Sato to bring some. I was about 100 meters from Sato when he abruptly turned and looked directly at me. I blinked in surprise. There was no way he saw me through the trees. So, he's probably a sensor. Sato ran through three hand signs and shouted, Water release. Hiding in mist technique, he proceeded to blow a thick mist from his mouth. Alrighty I continued my approach while keeping an eye on Sato and jumped directly into the mist. Fool. You've jumped directly into my trap. I didn't say anything. I just got into a stance and continued to watch him as he circled. Eventually he got within 10 meters and shouted, Water release. Mouth shot I heard his voice come from behind even though I could see Sato in front of me. Neat. I watched a Senban-shaped needle of water form on his mouth, which he launched directly at my head. I sidestepped it and waited for his next move. Sato continued circling and started to shot another water Senban at my back. Water release. Mouth shot as soon as the water Senban left his mouth I shunshine behind him, sending a kick to the back of his knee. Sato dodged and jumped away to create some distance. I however was not having it and stuck to Sato like glue sending repeated kicks at his legs. Sato seeing that he couldn't disappear into the mist brought out a kunai and turned to engage me. Die kid. I brought out one of my kunai and we engaged in a clash of blades. We clashed a few more times before I palmed a second kunai and tossed it at his gut. He sidestepped the kunai, and I took the time to shunch into him, while aiming a one-for-all enhanced kick at his knee. Sato tried to block my kick with his own. That was a mistake. E-R-A-C-K asterisk fuyuk. He toppled over and tried to drag himself backwards using his arms. Another shunchen and a punch to the back of his head, and he was down for the count. I jabbed him in the elbows with some gentle fist strikes just to be sure. And the fight was over. I quickly scanned my surroundings before deactivating Chikaku no Kayuka and my Bayakugan. I blew a breath out of my mouth and smiled. I enjoyed that fight. I grabbed the chakra restraints and put them onto his wrists before slapping the sleeping seal onto his forehead. Job done. I started to pilfer his kunai pouch for those explosive seals. I turned around and saw my mother leaning against a tree giving me a touch of a smile. What? Her smile widened a bit. It's fine if you steal from a defeated enemy just don't steal from the dead. I wish I had known that earlier. Perhaps that was another reason Minato didn't like me. Okay. My mother picked up Sato, threw him over her shoulder, and started making her way to his camp, where I figured we'd stay for the night. We arrived at the camp, I took the slightly burnt meat from the fire and took a bite. Hum, rabbit, want some? I waved the skewered meat at my mother. Yes, please. Sato was set against a tree, and my mother joined me at the fire. I snapped the makeshift skewer in half and gave my mother the bigger half. We both sat and enjoyed our meal. Shiro, what? Hum, my mother bit her lip before responding. I don't know how to say it nicely, but you need to improve your gentle fist. I wouldn't know how to say it nicely either. No worries. How should I improve it? I'm doing exactly what Takuma taught me. I burnt it into my mind with Kokoro no Kaoka, so it was exactly as I was taught. Skilled gentle fist users can disable their chakra flow by hitting their tenketsu. I only saw you using the gentle fist to destroy his muscles. That was the point. I can hit the tenketsu, but I only go for them when I'm using one of the 8 trigrams techniques. Hitting tenketsu was only useful when done more than a few times, and it was far easier to cripple my opponent. So I usually didn't bother with trying to hit their tenketsu. Well, don't cripple your opponent when they're already down. It makes you look cruel. What's it matter if he's crippled? He's a dead man walking alright. So, don't steal from the dead or cripple already downed opponents. I'm learning a lot on this mission. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second.
that said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.